The following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Welcome to ESPN's Rivalry Week, presented by Remington. In Kansas City, we're ready for Arrowhead Armageddon. Missouri quarterback Chase Daniel, his Kansas counterpart Todd Breezy. So Todd, baby. The game of the year is here. The roots of this rivalry date back to the 1850s, when the Kansas-Missouri border divided north from south. Time has healed that division, but the feelings still run deep. And what was a border war is now a football feud. Now they settle their differences on the gridiron. And never was there more at stake than in their meeting tonight. Take a good look at these teams. A surprise to some, but not to themselves. Never doubting this was their destiny to be ranked so high this late in November with so much on the line like a trip to the Big 12 title game and maybe the BCS championship down the road. Respect? They both have it, but that isn't their goal. It's to turn the numbers two and four before their names into a resounding number one, Kansas and Missouri in prime time on Saturday Night Football. showdown is ready to erupt it's Kansas against Missouri and the stakes are enormous the winner will capture the Big 12 North advance to San Antonio for the championship game next week and probably be number one in the BCS standings tomorrow we welcome you to Saturday Night Football presented by Southwest Airlines let the top five in the BCS standing sink in. Already number one has lost. There's Kansas, West Virginia, big winner today, and there is Missouri. We welcome you to what certainly could be the game of the year. With Kirk Herbstreit, I'm Brett Musburger. Folks, let this sink in. If either Kansas or Missouri wins their next two games, they will play for the national championship. Let, let's let's let that sink in for the fans because it's amazing to think in a year we've had so many upsets in college football. How fitting to have Kansas in Missouri controlling their own destiny, not only for a conference title, but to get to the national title. It's an amazing year. And Kirk, we've got a great showdown between two fine young quarterbacks, Chase Daniel and Todd Reese. Well, Brent, as you know, both these quarterbacks come into this game playing as well as any quarterbacks in the country. And the thing they have in common, a a great deal of confidence in the system and the players around them. I want to see which defense is up to the task of trying to slow down one of those guys or both of those guys. I think we're going to see some points. 80,000 fans on hand here tonight. And when it's over, one of these two schools will be ready to erupt and celebrate. wave of rain has passed round number two coming up after the game this is ESPN on ABC Saturday night football that's right number four Missouri number two Kansas who would have thought at the beginning of those this year those numbers would be standing 
John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Certainly none of the three of us up here. And if you say you were, you're lying. We know that. <laughs> Tennessee facing Kentucky this afternoon. Tennessee trying to get the victory and try to get into the SEC championship game against LSU. Fourth overtime, two-point conversion. They needed to tie the game. Andre Woodson gets tackled. Yeah, get rid of the football. Do something with it. Don't get tackled. Valiant effort by Kentucky today and Andre Woodson. But Tennessee, congratulations. They'll represent the SEC Eastern Division. Big East title up for grabs, and guess who grabbed it? Pat White, 24 yards here. It really doesn't matter who's running with the football for West Virginia. All of them are running wild today. Pat White, 186 yards was a season high for him. Even the guys that were backups were coming in and running off 40, 50 yard runs. So West Virginia and Ohio State now are both teams who have BCS berths nailed down. The winner of tonight's game between Missouri and Kansas is going to have a chance to play Absolutely. for one. Imagine you have to win this game, then you have to win the Big 12 championship. A shot at it, you know, and yeah. that's what you're trying to do is just play one game at a time. But this is really a team, I believe, that you're going to find out in Kansas that the discipline that they have on defense is going to come into play for them against Chase Daniel. Missouri's offense is good. Make no mistake about it. They're really good. But when I visit with Mark Mangino, he really thinks that his team on defense plays unselfish, disciplined, fast to the football, and we're going to have that tonight. I agree. I think that's where they have the edge. And they, obviously, the talk tonight is about the quarterback position, both Chase Daniel, Todd Reesing, phenomenal quarterbacks, undersized guys, under-recruited guys. Reesing hasn't thrown an interception in six weeks. Daniel's thrown one in the last three weeks. Between them, 25 touchdowns, one interception. They let it rip. The small guys, cold weather, might bother them a little bit gripping the football. Mm -hmm. All right. We, of course, will see you at halftime right now. Time to join the game day crew to Chris and Lee. Chilly night, full moon overhead, electric inside, feels about like 50-50, Lee. If you judge these scenes on the hoof, Missouri looks to be the more impressive. That hasn't bothered Kansas all season long. Compare the scores against the five common opponents. Missouri, a more dominant team. They beat all of them by at least two touchdowns. Kansas has played some close games. Missouri, your pick today. Yeah, but Missouri's my pick because I saw them lose to Oklahoma, but I was impressed with their offense. This Chase Daniel, the quarterback, tight spiral. He's got two tight ends, 82 Marlon. Rucker and 49 Chase Kaufman, 6'6", 250. They run like wide receivers. Then Jeremy Macklin on the outside, number nine. I don't think Kansas can stop him. Which defense can get a service break? How will either team <laughs> respond if they fall behind? Kansas hasn't been behind in the game for more than a few minutes, and Missouri's been playing with the lead either. So which team can handle the pressure and win the biggest game of their lives? Kansas about to take the field here. We were told to expect a lot more Jayhawk fans, and it's their chance to make noise. Kansas and Missouri for the Big 12 North. For the number one ranking in the BCS, for bragging rights, a lot on the line. Kickoff coming up when you come back to Kansas City. This telecast available on ABC HD, presented by DLP HT DV. It's cold whether it's in high definition or not. We're down into the 30s right now here in Kansas City. Snow flurries earlier today, but it stopped around noontime, and we're not expecting any more. Here's your timeline presented by Sports Authority. How big is this rivalry? 116th meeting, the second longest, and they cannot agree on the series record. We'll cover that story tonight. And the first meeting ever with both in the top 10 and both are in the top five here tonight. So Gary Pinkle won the toss and elected to take the football immediately. He wants to see if his sensational freshman, number nine, Jeremy Macklin, can get his hands on the ball. He wants to see right away what that man, Mark Mangino, his counterpart across the way, is going to do, what they're going to do with Macklin. Will they attempt to kick it over his head, sail it in? Kick it high and short. Scott Webb. Ball will be put on the tee. The referee tonight is a good one. John Bible's Big 12 crew. One of the most electrifying freshmen in the country stands back on the goal line. Game on. From the two. Macklin looks left out. He got one in the middle. 35 stumbles following his own blocker, and he's down at about the 37-yard line behind Earl Goldsmith. And so here comes 
Young Mr. Chase Daniel the junior from South Lake Texas Kirk. Well he's one of the more accurate quarterbacks in the country Brent close to 70 percent of his passes. He engineers an offense that I think is the most explosive offense right now coming into this football game because of the amount of weapons he has on the outside and this young man is playing with a ton of confidence coming into this game against Kansas. It's a no huddle spread. Five wide to start the game. Daniel from the gun ran this offense in high school incomplete and it'll be second down and ten. So Kirk talked about Chase Daniels. We take a look at the starting lineups presented by Dell. We have mentioned Jeremy Macklin. You will see him as a running back and a wide receiver. Martin Rucker one of their two very talented tight ends. Then in that offensive line, Kirk, the man in the middle, Adam Spiker, a three-year starter. Well, they're playing well. They understand what their assignment is. And as a unit, they're playing very, very well right now, Brent. Four receivers on the right side. Daniel drops it off down below to Macklin, handling as a receiver for the first time. And this is going to be third and long is Tlaib. Akib Tlaib, the best corner for the Jayhawks, makes the stop. Bill Young has his defense coming out, playing with a lot of energy. I saw him on the field before the game, and he said, I don't even know why we're showing up tonight. All this talk about Missouri's offense, and he's been giving his team that message, kind of poor-mouthing them to try to get him fired up to try to take down Chase Daniel in this Tigers offense. Third and eight. Five receivers out for Daniel. Jayhawk show blitz trying to get to him, trying to rush him. He's got time. Goes deep but high, incomplete. And it's three and out for Mizzou. Three and out, and they came with the blitz early. Well, this is something you'll see throughout tonight from both teams is mixing up the looks. The first couple snaps from Kansas, a conservative look. This time, the blitz from Joe Mortensen, the outside linebacker, who just about gets to Daniel. But for these quarterbacks, you have to disrupt their timing and rhythm with their receivers. Adam cross it back. And back is Anthony Webb to return the punt for the Jayhawks. Under a little bit of pressure that time. Fielded at the 29 yard line and breaks the first tackle, but not the second, and down at the 15 yard line. Jake Sharp, a terror on the special teams, getting down the field, and so too was Brock Christopher. So now, Kirk, we will take our first look at young Todd Reesey here. Uh, Brent, you and I saw him just a few weeks ago in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. Everybody talks about how he's undersized, 5'10 or 5'11. Young man has not thrown an interception in six games. It gives you an idea how much rhythm that he has in this Kansas offense and the way they're playing. He checks over at the sideline. They, too, go without a huddle. Trying to pass along the signal. This is one of the noisiest NFL venues in the country. Option play. McAnderson takes the pitch. Nothing doing. And our Dell computer Kansas offense, Kirk mentioned. Young Reesing and Brandon McAnderson touches the ball, but keep an eye on number 86, Marcus Henry, exploded in Stillwater the night we had him. Anthony Collins Kirk is back at left tackle. Tonight. Uh, he's the leader up front. He missed the Iowa State game a week ago. I think more than anything, just trying to rest him to get ready for Missouri. He's the leader. He'll have to play well at left tackle. You'll see this a lot from Kansas looking over to get the call. First pass is juggled incomplete. The linesman right there. Dexton Fields was the intended receiver. He's the junior from Dallas. You gotta remember, these teams are in uncharted waters as far as the excitement that build up in this game. And anytime you have so much pressure on these teams, it's not shocking to see a little bit of nerves. They need to work that out here in these first couple of series. Let's see how Kansas does now on third down. Three receivers and a tight end on the left side next to the tackle. Reasoning throws back in underneath the Dexton Fields and he's short of the first down. So here comes the punt team and it's three and out for the Jayhawks. Again, nice to see these defenses. They've heard all week about the two quarterbacks and 
last time in the first series for both defenses. They step up and force the three and out. So here comes young Macklin. He's caught a pass and he's returned to kickoff. Let's see what Kyle Tucker can come up with. Field position going to be huge in this game. Macklin signals fair catch at the 37 yard line. Underway in Kansas City, a neutral site, a Kansas home game for the championship of the Big 12 North. The border war, Missouri and Kansas. The Lawrence, of course, the closest to Kansas City. And as a result, Mark Mangino took his team back to Lawrence after the walkthrough yesterday. And then today they drove the 50 miles. There was one problem, an enormous traffic jam outside of Arrowhead. The team was 20 minutes late in arriving here at the stadium. You got caught up in that, didn't you? Yeah, sure. Bit? First down at 10. <laughs> So did Carl Peterson, the general manager of the Chiefs. And a handoff on the first down to the running back, Tony Temple. Temple picks up about five yards in our Kansas defense here tonight. And in that front, James McClinton is a candidate for all Big 12 honors. And the linebacker, Joe Mortensen and Mike Rivera, have been standouts. In the secondary, we've already talked about Akib Talib. He is the junior. He's the shutdown. He'll be keeping an eye out for number nine. He now goes in motion into the backfield off a of fake. Daniel going to throw to him on that far side. Kansas ready for the play. James Holt read the play beautifully on that far side and made the stop. Well, this Kansas defense is well schooled. They always seem to be in the right place, the right time, and that could be beneficial tonight. As much as Missouri likes to use Macklin, sometimes as a decoy. This time, the fake on the reverse. They come back and throw it, and there is James Holt, number two on his team, in tackles right where he needs to be. So far, the Jayhawk defense, coordinated by veteran Bill Young, doing an outstanding job, keeping Mizzou in third and long in the first two series. Daniel couldn't find an open man and they're forced to punt again. He was forced to take off as the secondary had covered the receivers, Kirk. Well, that was great coverage, as you indicated, Brent, downfield. And I think right now, a bit of confusion with Chase Daniel and his receivers and tight ends and trying to get in sync and credit Kansas and confusing them and mixing up their looks right now. They brought pressure on third down. Other times they're dropping seven or eight into coverage. Crossett's had two punts blocked this season, and his net is 39.4. It has dropped off. There was a little bit of pressure on his first punt. And this one they kept pretty clean. Fair catch back at the 22-yard line. And let us check in with the third member of our team, Lisa Salters. Lisa? Well, Brent, I talked uh, to both quarterbacks earlier in the week about playing in this cold, and Chase Daniel said that he went online to see what the weather was going to be, and when he saw it was going to be cold, he said it got me to thinking, and I have to say that I played some of my best games in cold weather. I said in Texas, and he said, yeah, it gets pretty cold in Texas in November and December. Todd Reesing said, I'm not going to think about it. To me, it's going to be 80 degrees and sunny. But just because he's not thinking about it doesn't mean he didn't plan for it. He threw the ball pretty well in the pregame warm-ups with those gloves. And uh, Chase not where here comes the blitz. Inside handoff, and the blitz was successful. William Moore coming up from that safety. When Pig Brown was injured and lost for the season, Moore had to pick it up, and he's had a huge year. Well, William Moore in a nickel package with five defensive backs will come up, and the reason they moved him in to where Pig Brown was is because of his versatility. He loves to blitz. He can cover. He also has the ability to get out and take away an opposing player out in the flat. He's a multiple talented player for this Missouri defense. On second and 11, fired complete to the 30-yard line, and now it's third and very makeable on the Derek Fine reception against this Missouri defense. Lorenzo Williams, he along Ziggy Hood, have done a fine job in the middle. Brock Christopher and Sean Witherspoon have been outstanding. And this is the group that will be under fire. We've talked about more. I think Carl Guinness, watch him, number 19, the true freshman from Missouri. Probably the most talented player, but he is a true freshman. I think Kansas will come after him from time to time. There's the late signal from the Kansas sideline, and we've seen pass it along. 
incomplete as the pocket was collapsing. Lorenzo Williams and the big fellas in the middle were applying some heat. For the first times, I think, all year, I've seen some frustration out of Todd Reesing. He looks downfield, he thinks he has an open man, but again, very good coverage, and there's something we have not seen from number five very much at all this year. Macklin back. To the 25-yard line, gets to the sideline, looks for an alley, and he is stopped by Kyle Tucker, the punter. Kyle Tucker prevented a touchdown on the Macklin return. Mr. Excitement was loose again on the near sideline. Well, Brent, you've been waiting for this opportunity to see we all have coming into this game because of what he can do. And I'll tell you what, Tucker makes a heck of a play to fight off a block and prevent a big touchdown here for Missouri early in this game. He had to fight off Alexander's block downfield and eventually pushed him out of bounds. Late substitution. Greg Bracey dashes on the field. Now 11 for the offense. Great field position after that 43-yard return. Firing complete. Tommy Saunders, and it's another first down as he brings Mike Rivera with him out of bounds, and Mizzou is alive and well. One of the adjustments right now that Kansas has got to be able to deal with is five wide receivers and a quick pass from Chase Daniel. Kansas is spending a lot of their energy in the middle of the field where the tight ends are, which means the outside receivers, in this case Tommy Saunders, have to step up and make the plays. Jimmy Jackson checks in as the running back. He's alongside Chase Daniel. Now here comes Macklin around, and he's got it this time. But Rivera does not let go at the 15-yard line, and we send you off to New York. Hi there, Matt Weiner here in New York. I'll let you know what's happening around the country throughout the game. In this Taco Bell update, Tim Tebow with his last chance to impress Heisman voters, and boy, is he impressive. A new single season total offense record for Florida. Five touchdowns tonight as the Gators are rolling it up on Florida State. Auburn leads early in the Iron Bowl, 7-0 on a Lynn Tate touchdown run. And here we are scoreless. Eight minutes to go in the opening quarter. Second down and five after a splendid punt return. And Macklin, he's been all over the field so far. And John Larson, one of the fine defensive ends for the Jayhawks, makes that stop. Macklin, of course, last week, 360 yards of all-purpose yards. He's had just an amazing year as a redshirt freshman. And Chase Daniel, disgusted as he walks After away. This play, this foul, number two on the offense. That's a 15-yard penalty. The down counts. So Franklin downfield incurs a very costly penalty. Both of these teams have been able to avoid a lot of penalty trouble although we note that Kansas a week ago against Iowa State had nine. Let's take a look at this. Well the emotions of a rivalry game and Tlaib is not going to be quiet. He gives him a little oh, shot. It's a second oh. man. Yeah. Second and he, he, man. Oh, there's a little push there at the end as well coming in from Franklin. So it's third and a bunch. Play fake. Daniel moves the pocket back. Still looking for a receiver. Looking downfield. Has to drop it off well short of the first down. And a splendid tackle that time by Sadiq Mohammed. So Mohammed yanks down Denario Alexander on the play. Outstanding coverage again, this time by Aqib Tlaib. He took away William Franklin. The reason that you looked and saw Chase Daniel, he wanted to come to the backside, but outstanding coverage by Tlaib. He didn't have anybody to go to. A fake off the Jeff Wolford field goal, but they are short of the first down. The fake fails Kansas football. Tommy Saunders threw it to Franklin. This is a, not only a fake, Brent, 
But I think with Franklin, he acted as if he checked out of the game and stayed on the field, just trying to blend into the sideline. The design worked very well, but give Kansas credit for getting over into position to keep Franklin short of the first down. Reesing. Standing at the nine. Now he'll check over to the sideline. The coaches have checked the defensive personnel. They'll hand signal into Reesing. He'll walk up behind the center. Relay the play along the line. The flanker screen. And it's good for nine yards to Fields. Go back to that fake field goal. See Franklin just a, just maybe six inches on the field trying to blend in with the rest of his teammates, but Kansas ready for it. Coming over there, Chris Harris, the cornerback, as a freshman, makes a great play. And I'll tell you, that would have been a 39-yard field goal well within Wolfert's range. And the inside handoff to Jake Sharp, who is now the running back, trying to pick up the first down. And the... Uh, it may have been just a touch short there, Kurt. What I'm seeing here in these first few series is something that Kansas has not seen for a long time. Missouri has decided to be the aggressor. Instead of sitting back and waiting for Todd Reesing to establish himself and dictate the tempo, they're attacking downhill. Quick snap from under center. McAnderson rumbles for the first down. Powerful fella out to the 36-yard line. And he's brought down by Bridges. Kansas has done this this time they go with a quick count first time tonight catches Missouri off guard a bit And I'm gonna tell you if you haven't seen Brandon McAnderson run the football tonight the senior It's a load and he's got great quickness a little bit of sugar here comes McAnderson breaks the first tackle Ziggy hood Lost a handful on that play and finally is run out of bounds but he did pick up about three yards go back to that a point about how Missouri is attacking downhill and coming after Kansas I think Kansas is reacting by going with the quick the quick toss to get McAnderson to the outside I think they've got to go downfield to try to stretch this Missouri defense Missouri shows linebacker blitz they hand off to the middle but this will bring up a third down, and the Jayhawks are going to need about five yards after the tackle by Shulock. Ed Warner, the offensive coordinator from Kansas, coming over from Illinois. He did a great look at him right there. He's done just a, an amazing job of putting this offense together. Feels confident. We'll see what kind of adjustments he makes against this attacking Missouri defense. He's calling the plays right now from upstairs and communicating them down. Missouri showing pressure. Reese, he's got a man open. Incomplete. He got turned around on the play. William Moore lost contact with Fields that time, and a big one was there for the taking, Kirk. Missouri continues with this team early in the game, attacking third down. They blitz. They take a chance and play man to man. William Moore, the safety, locked up one on one with Dexton Fields, and Fields just couldn't make the adjustment to haul in the pass. Uh, it's Tucker versus Macklin again. He booms this one, a fair catch signal at the 22 yard line. A tense game for the Big 12 North Championship between ancient rivals, Kansas and Missouri. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company plane. Visit Southwest.com. The Ford Edge, spirit of a sports car, versatility of an SUV. Verizon Wireless and Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? And as soon as... ABC and ESPN finish here tonight. CBS moves center stage. They have to get ready for tomorrow's noon kickoff central time. The Chiefs and the Oakland Raiders. So there'll be a quick turnaround. This crew will work through the night here. Now Chase Daniel 
taking over. And uh, four receivers to the top. Confusion. Timeout was called, yep. I believe. And the timeout, Tony Temple was waving his hands, and he called he called timeout. Kirk, I, I want to go back to something. I just checked about Gary Pinkle. I want to ask you. I just checked with George Hill, a stats man. I was pretty sure it was fourth and more than ten on that fake field goal. Fourth, it surprises me in a game of this magnitude and this intense that a coach with a very good field goal kicker. Now make no mistake about that. That man has not missed this year in Big 12 play. Wouldn't go for a 39 yard. Were you or what do you I, think? I, I was with you. I was surprised. Just it's early in the game. Rivalry game. So much at stake. You'd think he's maybe going to take the points there because he has a kicker more than capable of being able to make that kick. But if you look at Gary Pinkle. He's a bit of a risk taker I and mean, part of getting to this game and being in this position he's willing to take some chances so it's within his character to take that risk but we'll find out if this ends up backfiring they did get the football back to Chase Daniel good point on that if that's his M.O. why not first down and 10 with 428 to go here Daniel backed up here comes Temple the running back through the middle big hole gashes for a first down. This is what you have to be aware of with Missouri. They get in four and five receiver sets, but they can also get physical and run the football. Curtis Gregory, Colin Brown lead Tony Temple right up into the middle, and they have no problem creasing a defense if you spend too much time worrying about Chase Daniel throwing the football. All on the 34-yard line for Daniel and the Tigers. And blocking assignments broke down completely on that play. As James Holt, the linebacker, shot the gap and number 12 almost beat the football there. Brand you're all over it here. James Holt, aggressive Kansas defense right in the middle. He's going to come right through the center and the right guard. A little bit of a mistake this time by Gregory. Gregory, the right guard, turned to his right and it allowed Holt to shoot right through that gap between the guard and the center right in the middle of that defense. Well scouted on that zone blocking scheme as speaker never saw him as he zipped through either did he second down now and Daniel has much better protection this time and fires for the first down Alexander. Now this is more like Chase Daniel getting into rhythm. The game's now. He's probably starting to settle down. A lot of attention being pay, paid to Macklin as he comes in motion and he goes behind Chase Daniel. And it opens it up very nicely right in the middle of that defense to a very talented receiver in Alexander. Ready to go from near midfield. Temple again. And Temple gashes again. Run out of bounds on that far sideline, but not until he crosses the 30-yard line for a 22-yard game. Well, when Tony Temple is in this game, he's not only physical, he has patience like all great backs have. And this is a good job by the offensive line of getting the Kansas defense on their heels and pushing them to the sideline. And it opened it up for Tony Temple to shoot through there. And all of a sudden, Missouri's offense starting to create that momentum. Look at the bunch there at the bottom of your screen. Look at the four diamond. But he fires back where he's got one man out on the left side. And that's Bill Franklin as we send you quickly to Matt in New York. All right, Brent, the winner of this game gets Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship next Saturday night at 8 Eastern. Oklahoma quarterback Sam Bradford's our nominee for the AT&T ESPN All-America Player of the Week after four touchdowns and a new bowl subdivision record for touchdown passes by a freshman. Text vote date 7654 on your AT&T wireless phone to cast your vote. Jackson checks back into the Missouri backfield. Here's a double reverse. Alexander coming around. First down. It looked ugly for a couple of seconds, but he made the most of it before Rivera was able to attack. Denario Alexander. Macklin again comes in motion. You're seeing a lot of this. He picks the football up. Almost a great play that time by the linebacker Holt, who got in there. But it's just Alexander. It's well defended by Kansas, but Alexander's athletic ability allowed him to snake through the defense to pick up a first. Daniel comes back to the right side. Saunders short of the goal line, put it on the ground. Ball was down. And it, they signal right away that Missouri recovered. And they'll have a first and goal. So many weapons for Missouri. 
And what we're seeing is Macklin is definitely being used in a variety of ways. Saunders comes through, makes a play, is down, and then the football comes out. And regardless, Missouri recovered the fumble anyway. Daniel signals to his wide receivers out wide. Brings Franklin in closer on the right side. Goldsmith is the running back. Goldsmith is stopped. Thrown for a loss on the play. A little pushing and shoving. Larson and McClinton in on the stop for the Jayhawks. Jerry Ma Jeremy Macklin is being used Brent and we knew coming in he'd return punts return kickoffs but he has been all over this field tonight not only when he has his hands on the ball but a lot of times they're using him as a decoy to open up other outlets on their offense temple checks back into the game he is split out as a receiver to the right side five receivers now for chase Daniel. got a man open incomplete wanted macklin in the back of the end zone Macklin shaking up just a little bit on that play. Reaching down. And they have to come out here for a play. Thornton, the defender. Thornton's there. It's a timing pass between the quarterback, Daniel, and his favorite target, Jeremy Macklin. Thornton was there, but the time he turned, the ball was past him. Macklin will have to come off now. The freshman. Sensation Jeremy Macklin from Kirkwood, Missouri. He's a redshirt freshman. In case you have not heard his story, folks, blazing speed, blew out a knee prior to last year, which would have been his true freshman year. Comes back this year and he's had a sensational campaign. Broke the all purpose record for freshmen. Brent, remember the tight ends and the size advantage at 6 6 against this Kansas defense. Daniel looking for one right now. Gonna have to drop it in underneath to Temple, the running back, goes for the end zone, reaches for it, and down at the one. The field judge right there says he's down at the one to leave. Making the stop. Great coverage here by Kansas, but how about the poise by Chase Daniel? Buying time, buying time, and then eventually he finds Temple, and there's the tough physical running again from Tony Temple. He almost gets it into the end zone. Saunders made a key block on that play. So here's a fourth and goal coming up. No hesitation. Mizzou going for it here on fourth and goal. Diving end zone. Touchdown, Missouri. Martin Rucker, number 82, scores the evening's first touchdown. Jeff Wolpert tacks on the extra point. 82 consecutive combined kicks now for Wolford. A touchdown on fourth and goal. Chase Daniel, reason to celebrate, young man. Oh, game day. Yeah, lucky breakfast. <laughs> Bergwood, your new car's rolling. It's not stolen, I just bought it. It's gonna hit that truck! Please no need to swear! <laughs> oh. oh! Hot car, huh? It's on fire. Do you have new car replacement? Hmm? Call Allstate to sign up today. Are you in good hands? Missouri strikes first, and Kansas trails for just the seventh time this year. And the last five times, Kirk, that they've been behind, and we were there once, they've come back to score on the next possession each of the last five times. 
And you called it. They found one of the tight ends for a touchdown. Yeah, they had Kaufman down to the right, and Rucker, who has just been a, a go-to receiver all year, leads the team with 70 receptions coming in, made a great play, and got into the end zone. Now there's a great return man on the Kansas side who will touch it for the first time, and that is Marcus Herford. Wolford with the ball on the tee. They're going to kick it short and high. They're going to pooch it to the 30 yard line. And Kansas will have it at about the 35. So they'll kick it away from Herford. Let's go back to the TD, Kirk. Yeah, well designed play this time by the offense from Missouri. Macklin goes here. Alexander goes here and here of course is the tight end Rucker who comes underneath what I want you to see this is just a rub route with the receivers they almost just set up a wall here and allows Rucker to come right in here and make the catch good concentration with the traffic and a nice touchdown for Missouri so far folks the story of this game the domination by the Missouri defense they've given up no points and only 42 yards to this high flying Kansas offense. Advantage early to Mizzou's defense. They collapse the pocket. McAnderson, the running back, but that's only for about a yard. So again, Kirk, advantage Tiger D. Well, right now we're seeing Missouri. They are not intimidated by Todd Reese. They're coming into this game and they're saying the last time a, a defense pressured Kansas was Kansas State about seven games ago. And Kansas State created turnovers against Reesing, and they came in tonight to go after Reesing and make him prove that he and his offense can make the plays. End of the first quarter in ESPN Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, returns after this message and a word from our ABC station. It was the late Lamar Hunt's dream to bring these two schools together to play here in Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. 80,000 on hand. This is the first of a two year contract. Next year, it is a home game for Missouri. Each school tonight guaranteed a million dollars by the Chiefs. 7 0. Missouri leads it as we start the second quarter. Young Reesing going deep down. Fair. Got it. To the 25 yard line, he finds Kerry Meyer. Last year's quarterback and now a wide receiver for 40 yards. This is exactly what Kansas needed to do to get Todd Reesing and his offense going. I continue to talk about Missouri attacking a blitz again. Safety comes down, Dell Howard, and replacing behind him is Kerry Meyer, who the former quarterback shows great hands. Nice throw that time by Reesing. We'll see if this gets him going into rhythm. Play fake McAnderson in zone. Intercepted by Moore, his seventh interception of the season. The All-American safety does what he's been doing all year since the injury sustained by Pig Brown. He snuffs out a Kansas scoring drive. Brent William Moore proving week after week that he's a ball hawk. Missouri not slowing down. They're still coming after Todd Reesing despite the big play by Meyer. And for good reason, William Moore, one on one coverage, steps underneath Dexton Fields and shows tremendous athletic ability to be able to make that catch. Well, with Pig Brown down, William Moore has become the MVP for the Tiger defense. And his first interception in his last 213 <laughs> attempts. And they're going to review this upstairs. Just take another look at it. John Bible talking to the technicians and the officials upstairs in the booth. One thing they could be reviewing is the spot of the football. Did his momentum take him into the end zone or did he purposely go into the end zone to try to get a touchback? He intercepted the ball at about the, at the one yard line. And I think they have to be able to decide did his momentum take him into the end zone for a touchback or did he purposely go into the end zone? It's all about where he made the interception and at that point the officials upstairs trying to make a decision to me it looks like he made the catch he was going to go into the end zone he could not have prevented himself from going into the end zone 
Therefore, that is the right call on the field. They, Missouri should have the ball. Missouri did intercept the football, but they did so on the two-yard line. Their momentum carried them into the end zone. Therefore, it will be Missouri's ball, first and ten at the two-yard line. Wow. So the ball will be brought back to the two, and that's a big edge for the Manginos. There's a lot of difference in field position, Kirk. Oh. Whoa, 18 yards here. And so far, the field position has favored Missouri in the first quarter. Chase Daniel brings the offense out. Temple is the running back, number 22. Rucker, who scored the touchdown, is out on the field. They'll still let's see if they show a more traditional formation than they do. Cut down the line splits, bring Temple up behind in a traditional eye formation. Run behind the offensive line and Temple gets to the left side. Picks up a big first down. And gains a little field position in the process with that fine run. Boy, Kansas, you have nine defenders. Nine defenders up in this boxed area. You know Missouri's going to run the football. you got to expect that he's going to bounce that to the outside. A poor angle that time by the safety, Stuckey. Allowed Missouri and Temple to get the ball to the outside, and all of a sudden they've got better field position. Temple has rushed Kirk for 58 yards, and they bring his backup, Jimmy Jackson, in, and they are gashing this Kansas defense with the run here tonight. If it's not Temple, it is Jackson reeling off big yards. The line right now for Missouri setting the tone. This time it's Madison Llewellyn pulling around from the left side on a counter and opening it up for Jimmy Jackson. And Jackson, much like Temple, showing great patience before exploding through the hole. And just like that, Missouri's at the 36-yard line after two run plays. Starting back on the two-yard line. False start. You can see that line starting to pull back. He's lobbying for the fact that they were in the neutral zone on the defensive side. Before the snap, false start, 79 offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Llewellyn pulled out on that left side just a touch early. It's the thing that is so amazing about Missouri is it you, you kind of get caught up in Chase Daniel and the five wide receiver sets and you don't realize that they average 172 yards a game running the football. It's a very balanced attack that you constantly have to be aware of. Temple's in the game and he goes over to the right side of Daniel. He gets the handoff and he's found daylight over on that left side. Battling for three or four more yards before Stucky is able to get him out of bounds. And the reason this compliments Chase Daniel like any quarterback so well, because right now the safeties, Stucky just took, uh, had a, a great look at Justin Thornton. These safeties now are starting to come down and have to be in run support, and that's where Chase Daniel and Missouri will then try to take advantage of that and attack you down the middle of the field, throwing the football to his tight ends. Second down and 11. Five receivers. Here comes the blitz. Daniel fires quickly to the outside. Got the first down as he put it in Alexander's hands again. Alexander has been a factor here tonight to leave the defender. Demario Alexander a lot of times gets overlooked because of Jeremy Macklin and William Franklin. But if you spend too much time on the tight ends and Macklin and Franklin, this gives you an indication of the depth that Missouri has. And Alexander, a tremendous athlete at 6'5", they see he has a 40-inch, 46-inch vertical. On first down, here comes Macklin on that end around. Picking up about nine yards. I'll send you to New York and Matt Weiner. All right, Brent, time for a check of your prime time pulse. The 72nd edition of the Iron Bowl on ESPN. Auburn has won five straight in the series. They lead 10-7. And on ESPN2, Clemson leading South Carolina 17-7. The Tigers have gotten the run game going against the Gamecocks. Clemson looking for its fifth win in six tries. And here at 7-0, Missouri leading unbeaten Kansas. 12-54 first half. And complete for another first down. And it's their other very talented tight end, Chase Kaufman. 
their tight ends came into this game number one and number three as far as receptions on the season. And Rucker is 70, already 70 receptions coming in. He already scored a touchdown. Chase Kaufman, and both these guys are six foot six. What a mismatch against any defense that they ever would go up against. Jackson continues as the running back. Here comes a blitz. They blitzed it perfectly. Down at the 45 yard line, James McClinton. He's had 11 and a half tackles for a loss. Now, there are your two talented tight ends. Yeah, Rucker and Kaufman both come into this game having not only brilliant seasons, they've had wonderful careers in Columbia. And the one thing that I've noticed is watching Kansas, they're aware of those tight ends, but they're being attacked in so many different areas, it's hard to lock in in one, one spot to stop Missouri. Here's your second down and 17. Flanker screen to Franklin, and he's down at the 40-yard line, not even back at the original line of scrimmage. And this will bring up about a third and 12 here. And Larson, John Larson, makes the stop for the Jayhawks. This gives you a chance, but it's not a guarantee against Chase Daniel. You get him to third and 12, and all of a sudden, you have a couple choices. Bring the pressure or drop seven or eight back into coverage. Bill Young has shown most of this season on third down to bring pressure with linebackers. Derek Washington checks in for Mizzou. Macklin returns. Daniel looking downfield, throws to Franklin. Broken up. Fourth down on a jarring hit in the secondary. Daryl Stuckey. I think Chase Daniel was surprised because Franklin had to leave beaten to the middle of the field but Stuckey waiting for him right there and lowers the boom on Jeremy Macklin. However the flag is for holding and that's an automatic first down. So it would have brought up a fourth down but defensive holding called on the play. And this will give the Tigers a first down at the 30 yard line. So all season the Jayhawks under Mangino avoid the costly penalties. But here tonight this one hurts. Here's a blitz again. Temple to the right side this time. And it'll be second down and long. Bill Young's defense seems to be answering the call. And they'd be in good shape except for that holding. Hurt. Yeah the holding call really hurts and the timing of it. Mark Mangino has got to just be going crazy right now but it's kind of been a mixed bag on this drive alone for Kansas and their defense times they've been able to shoot through some gaps and slow down the running game and other times they've been gashed giving up some big plays second and ten for Daniels first down and loose again is Alexander to the ten yard line Alexander four catches for 60 yards so far. Martin Rucker is going to come from your right to your left. You see how number eight Mortensen goes with him when Mortensen followed Rucker it opened up a huge spot right behind where Mortensen was lined up in an easy throw that time for Chase Daniel and it's first and goal for the Tigers who lead it by seven. Daniel hands it off to Temple. He loses about a yard on the play, and James Holt, the linebacker, makes the stop. Remember this drive started back at the Mizzou two-yard line after the interception. Kansas threatening to score. They got the ball on the two, and now they have driven down. It is second and goal coming up for Daniel. I think a matchup that Chase Daniel might look to at the bottom of the screen. He's got one of his favorite targets, William Franklin, lined up against true freshman Chris Harris. Daniel, on the move, has to throw it away. It's going to be third down and goal. The Missouri coaches will tell you that we welcome the blitz. I said, you get into a lot of empty. You've got five offensive linemen. If somebody brings six, what do you do? They say, we welcome that. We want somebody to bring six because we've got a quarterback that makes such quick decisions that we're going to abuse them with that blitz and make them get out of it. That time, Kansas got there and forced Daniel to throw it away. 
Empty again. Three-man rush. Daniel still looking for somebody open. Retreats on the move. Complete. Alexander scores. A play that took a half dozen seconds to unfold, it seemed. <laughs> and Chase Daniel strikes again. His second touchdown pass of the night. Well, Chase Daniel has tremendous mobility and presence in the pocket. He realizes there's only three defenders chasing him down. He's got the speed to get away from Larson, buys enough time. And I'll tell you, I know Kansas had eight defenders in coverage, but it's tough that long to cover that many receivers, five receivers on the pattern. And Alexander works well that time with Chase Daniel. Jeff Wolford makes it a 14-point lead for the underdog. So Alexander scores and Mizzou leads it. And Gleason recovers a fumble in the end zone. That's his first career touchdown. Wait, is that a Dr. Pepper? Oh, he's going to make the most of this one. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad he's you could attend. It. Can inside, you believe this? We might be here all night. Is he really going to do this? Look out. Only Dr. Pepper has 23 flavors packed in one bold taste. For those who make the most of everything. We are back. 9-21 to go in the first half. Unbeaten Kansas. Trails once beaten Missouri by two touchdowns. 14-0. And the last time that Missouri kicked off as Alexander scored their second touchdown. But the last time they kicked off, they stayed away from Herford. They kicked it high and short with a pooch kickoff, which would seem to be the strategy. Herford was back on the four-yard line, one of the nation's leading kickoff return men. And we'll see if Missouri continues to kick it short here. They do exactly that. Yep. Fielded at the 23-yard line. And that'll be where young Reesing after McAnderson feel that. Let us go to New York, and here's Matt Weiner. Matt. All right, Brent, this Sports Center Minute is powered by Vizio. West Virginia ran all over Connecticut to win the Big East title today. Mountaineers racked up 517 yards on the ground in a 66-21 win. They're in great position for that BCS title game. And Virginia Tech beat Virginia to win the Commonwealth Cup. More importantly, the Coastal Division of the ACC. They'll take on BCC, BC in the ACC Championship. And here, Reesing on first down, flips it out, and for a short gain is Dexton Fields, and we welcome the general manager of the Kansas City Chiefs, Carl Peterson, in there. Carl, you were telling me what a long dream this was of the late Lamar Hunt to bring this game here there. Tell us about that. For over 30 years, he wanted to host this uh, great rivalry. When I came here 18 years ago, he said, do you think we can get it done? We stayed with it and persevered, and this is what we see, which is uh, couldn't have come better at a better time for both teams and for Kansas City. Here's second down and one now for Reesing and the Jayhawks downfield. He's got his first down, Kirk, at the 35. Well, you're kind of waiting for something to get Kansas going to spark this team. Remember, they have not trailed much at all this whole season. We're really going to find out if Todd Reesing is the leader that we think he is. He gets pressure. He puts the ball up. And Briscoe, the young freshman, makes a nice catch for a big game. And that's his first catch of the night. 8.30 here in the half. And Anderson battling for a couple of yards. And uh, Carl, this is going to be a tough turnaround for the Chiefs. You've got to kick it off tomorrow at noon. Our stadium operations people have the work cut out for them. Uh, you know, 7 o'clock kickoff here tonight and noon tomorrow for us. But, hey, we're very, very happy to host this. This is tremendous for both universities, for both states, and for Kansas City itself. Uh, this is this is a great venue, as you as you can see here. We've got over 80,000 people here, Brent. Second down, and Eggs flips it out to the side to Fields again. Fields is short of the first down. I was I, I'm so impressed by this stadium and by the atmosphere inside. And I've heard from so many players in the NFL. They say this is the closest thing to a college football stadium. Talk about how beautiful this is for you guys. Well, it begins again with Lamar Hunt and the architectural design, but. 
The seats are closer to the stadium than probably any in the NFL. Uh, it's the loudest, we think, outdoor stadium in the NFL. And of course, we're renovating this, but we are not going to fool with the integrity of the bowl. We don't want to take away uh, these great sight lines and how close they are to the field. It's, uh, it's a tribute to him. Third and, and four uh, is incomplete, Carl. And there's a penalty flag that's going to be an automatic first down. They went after Dennis this time. They get him on a holding call. They got the matchup that they wanted. Marcus Henry, one on one. Holding number 19 on the defense. That's on an eligible pass to Saber. 10 yards, previous spot, first down. He actually was holding him for the time he left the line of scrimmage with the right hand, just holding on <laughs> all the way down. He got a hold of his hand warmer there and didn't let go. It's a good job by the officials all over that call. Carl's never seen a guy in the NFL do that. Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, we try to do it very discreetly, but that's a good wide receiver, Marcus Henry Sr. coming out. We like him very much uh, from Kansas. Both teams have, have definite NFL players. and. Uh, again, it, it's such a, a great venue for them to play in and for these two fine, fine football teams. Call the uh, trophy tonight, the Lamar Hunt trophy, and the family, I understand, is here to present that. Norma Hunt, Clark Hunt, all the Hunts, Daniel Hunt, uh, uh, Lamar Jr. This, again, was something that he wanted so, so dearly, and uh, both schools felt it would be appropriate that the winner of this game, and we're going to host it again next year, will get the Lamar Hunt Memorial Trophy. So here is second down and six. They check for that signal from the sideline. McAnderson picks up the blitz, deflected though, and incomplete. Carl, are there any other players who are seniors on these two teams? Uh, you mentioned the wide receiver. Who else should yeah. we be looking at from a well, standpoint? From, from Missouri, obviously, uh, uh, Rucker, Martin Rucker, is a, is a heck of a player. Uh, we don't need a tight end right now, but we will in the future. <laughs> Tony Gonzalez is very good. The little running back, I really like him. Tony Temple, he's a Kansas City person and a fine, fine player. That uh, both teams, like I said, they're, they're going to they're going to have NFL players and continue to have that because of Mark Mangino and Gary Pinkle and the, and the fine job they've done with both of their uh, franchises, their, their schools, and the support that they get. Here's your third down and six. Fire incomplete, and it brings up a fourth down and uh, Mangino. Deciding whether to get a field goal, he sends that unit out onto the field here to get something up on the board. Got to come up with some points. Yep. Third down, we just haven't seen Kansas make these kind of mistakes, but they definitely need to get the points. What's, what's amazing is two great uh, offensive scoring teams. Yeah. It's only been two touchdowns. Touchdowns. Right, yeah. <laughs> But that's usually how it is. <laughs> Scott Webb to attempt a 33 yarder. Off to the right. Off the upright and no good. So far, Gary Pinkle has had things going his way. Carl, we want to thank you. Wish you the best of luck and thanks to Kansas thanks. City. Our pleasure to host you guys. Come back and see us. We will. Thank you. I don't miss work this Christmas. Yeah, how will you pay for things like food, electricity, Ooh, dental bills? Good zooks! You need a backup plan. Oh, oh, oh. That's why we have Affleck. So I'll have cash to help pay bills. Ah. Right, but what if you're still not better by Christmas? Hmm. Affleck! Affleck, ask about it at work. Rudolph's better. But now Blitzen's sick. Ah! Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company plane. Visit Southwest.com. The all-new Cadillac CTS, the 2008 Motor Trend Car of the Year. Aflac, ask about it at work. And Clean Exchange, a disposable head electric shaver, new from Remington. And the Missouri Pep Rally held in Kansas City last night, the first ever event at the new Kansas City Power and Light District. That's a, uh, I guess, about eight block development in downtown Kansas City here. And uh, they had a great time. Fans from both these schools enjoying it. I mean, it is like the uh, it, Texas Oklahoma game, except it comes at the end of the year. Being late, it almost feels like a bowl game or a conference championship game. Missouri, incomplete, but there's a holding call against Missouri. Kansas came on the blitz and Missouri's offensive line, offensive line definitely had to react on the in a way. Offense, Ten yard penalty. 
for be first down. Caught off guard here. Speaker, the center, had no other choice but to try to lock on to Mike Rivera, who came right through the middle. Kirk, what have you uh, seen tonight that might have surprised you so far? I'm surprised to see Missouri's defense is just coming right after Kansas and Tom Reesing, and it's worked to perfection to this point. We'll see if Reesing can make the adjustments. They had a good drive the last time out, just dropped the ball. And all of a sudden, we've seen Chase Daniel get in the sink and get this offense going. Little option look with Temple on the pitch on a first and 20, and he makes it to the 11. And as we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary, and uh, so far, Kirk, Missouri not dominating only on the scoreboard. The numbers in their favor. Yeah, everything seems to be in their favor right now, and I think everybody expected to see both offenses shining. We have 14 points. And here we are, you know, under six minutes to go in the first half, but right now, Missouri has controlled the game on both sides of the ball. Second and 18. Here's the blitz. Picked up and he throws in underneath. Kaufman's second reception of the game and Mortensen defends it. One of the things that Bill Young has a lot to show he has confidence in his team. Most often when you face an offense like Gary Pinkle who's going to put five receivers on the field, most defenses will put a nickel or a dime package with five or six defensive backs. For the most part, Bill Young tonight has decided to play his base defense with all three linebackers staying on the field. His third and 12. Kansas coming again. Throws for the first down. Martin Rucker, who caught the first touchdown pass of the night. And you know, Kirk, remember they told you? We want them to blitz. And they, they welcome the blitz, the blitz because they know they get matchups that they like. Rucker at 6-6 going up against Holt. Finds a nice hole and a good throw by Daniel to, to the sideline where Rucker can make that catch. So on a first and 20, they pick up a first and 10 at the 35-yard line. Got the sideline. Had a man wide open. It was Tommy Saunders. Chase Daniels starting to pick this secondary apart. He sure is, and this time Kansas sitting back and playing zone. There's a corner up to the right who comes up to take away the running back and opens it up right behind that defensive back to Tommy Saunders. Great recognition and a quick decision there by Chase. Chase Daniels thrown two more touchdown. Temple's in trouble. Brilliantly escapes to the 40-yard line after it looked like he was going to lose ground. Fine run. Tony Temple brings so much life to this offense because he is so physical as a runner. And as I said, Kansas came into this game fundamentally sound, known as a good tackling team. They're in position in many cases to make a play. They just can't bring Temple down. Temple off to the left of Daniel. Here comes the reverse. Temple keeps it. It was the reverse look that time, and I think you saw a picture of Macklin being jarred as the defender bought the fake on it. Kansas, first thing most people are watching this game and maybe seeing Kansas for the first time, maybe they're saying, hey, they're seventh in the nation coming into the night, stopping the run. But guys, they've never seen an offense like this. They're getting exposed. They've never seen this kind of talent tonight already in the first half. Allowing a lot of yards on the ground. See if Kansas can try to right the ship here and start to get more physical up front. A three-man rush on third and four. Now they show four coming with a late blitz. Franklin short of the first down marker. Very well defended as Chris Harris came up and made the stop. Against Missouri in their five wide receiver look, you have to have the ability to be able to make plays one-on-one -on -one and tackle in open space. That time, Harris, for a young man, stepped up and kept him short, and they'll go for it here on fourth. So Temple comes back into the game. He's to the right of Daniel. Daniel checks over to the sideline. There's the two tight ends also on the right side.
They're going to throw for it short of the first down. Not a good looking play. You've got to get the ball over that marker. I'm surprised that they didn't run that time instead of throwing it to Rucker. Well, especially the way Tony Temple has been not only elusive, but been very physical. Maybe this is the break that Kansas needs to get back into this game. Well, we'll find out as we take a break. Now it's time for the Aflac trivia question. <laughs> yeah, Herbie. Aflac. I was hot man. last week. Uh, who oh. was the player at the center of the 1960 Missouri-Kansas disputed game? The one that both still claim that they won. Think about that one. Sixty. My dad was a senior. That year. <laughs> <laughs> First down and ten here. Two fifty-two. Todd Reese. Kansas trying to mount something here. Down a couple touchdowns. Got a man open. Got him in center field to the 30-yard line. Well, roughing the passer. Roughing the passer on the top defense. of it. 15 added to the end of the run. First down. Shulock added on the 15 after Fields made the catch. Well, Fields makes the catch, and again, look at the linebackers. Look at the safeties coming up. They're trying to attack Kansas, and Kansas is finally getting the ball downfield. Gives you an idea of the toughness of Reesing. He blocks that completely out, makes the throw, and then takes the hit right in the face that time by Shulak. The Jayhawks are in the red zone now, and let's see what they can do. Trailing by two touchdowns. They'll start at the 17. Checking over to the sideline. Deflected. Incomplete. And again, pressure from that defensive front. Hood, Chavis, Williams, and Shulock bring in the heat. Well, the knock on Reesing is his size. He's listed at 5'11. I was on the field. I think he's about 5'9. And the one thing they try to do is get hands up in the face. Ed Warner, offensive coordinator in the top left. Assistant coaches down the top right. Quarterback Todd Reesing looking to the side. Most often he'll wait, look into the defense, and then look over and see if he does this time. Now Ed Warner will communicate what he wants. And then see the assistants make the sign, and then Reesing goes. They take everything out of the hands of Todd Reesing. High and incomplete. Briscoe was open and Todd threw a little high on that play. The whole philosophy there, Brent, as you know, is about trying to allow Reesing just to focus on executing. You're seeing this has become a big trend in college football throughout the country. The offensive coordinator from upstairs makes the initial call. Quarterback will communicate that up to the offensive line and to the rest of the team, and then if they like it, they'll go. Otherwise, they'll look over and try to get the audible. Again, Warner makes the call, gives it to the assistants. Couple decoys, one's live. He makes the adjustments, and away they go. Pump fake and in trouble. Fumble! Kansas saves it. Pouncing on it was Adrian Mays. He recovered the fumble. Saved the moment for Mangino's Jayhawks as Shulock was in on top. Watch he come around, jar the ball loose. Nice job, and there's the effort that it takes to be able to bring down Todd Reesing. The coverage is there, but the relentless pass rush from the Missouri Tiger front gets to him. So Scott Webb will try it again. Hit the right upright on his last field goal attempt. This one a little longer. 44-yarder. Jayhawks attempted to get on the board here in the first half. Pulled it to the left. Misfired again. He's 0 for 2. Things are not going the Jayhawks' way tonight at Arrowhead. Missouri leads it by 14. IBM presents the 25 greatest players ever. Number six, Jim Thorpe. Considered one of the greatest athletes in any sport, Thorpe was twice named All-American in football after leading Carlisle to upset wins over Harvard in 1911 and Army in 1912. IBM getting it done. So the legendary 
Jim Thorpe, number six, just ahead of Tony Dorsett, Bo Jackson, Roger Staubach, Vince Young, also in the in the top ten. And uh, number one, of course, will be announced New Year's Day on the Rose Bowl here on ABC. All right now, after another missed field goal, Chase Daniels fires complete to Macklin, and near the end of the game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team, and Chevrolet will make a one thousand dollar contribution to each university's general. Scholarship fund, and of course, that'll be near the end of the game, which has been dominated so far, ladies and gentlemen, by once beaten Missouri over unbeaten Kansas. Three down, Jayhawks blitz off of it. Daniel flush to the right, takes off. Can he get the first down? Yes, he does. Chase Daniel, folks, grew up in high school with this system down in South Lake, Texas, a legendary. High school program it was just a touch short for Mac Brown's taste coming off the Vince Young era down there. He committed early to Missouri after Ryan Perilou said he would not go to Texas but opted instead to go to LSU. The Longhorns inquired, and uh, Daniel uh, said no, he would he would honor his commitment. And uh, Missouri and Chase Daniel both are very very happy. Here comes the blitz, incomplete, knocked aside. All right now. Mr. Herbstreit, we ask you the question, the player at stake back in 1960. Do you have any idea who it was? Uh, He's a running back. Gail Sayers. No, <laughs> no but it was <laughs> Burt Cohn on this day. And folks, oh, of course. Both schools claim this victory. Bud Adams actually recruited him for his alma mater. You know the legendary old man who owns the Titans? Well, Burt Cohn was a fine player. And Kansas won two games with him. After the fact, they declared him ineligible. They changed the rule, and Kansas said he was eligible the day we beat him. Blitz, Daniel in trouble. Going to go down, and Muhammad able to get in on him, number 27 on the blitz. Muhammad gets in there, and Kansas waits until the last possible second, the bottom of the screen coming off the left edge. And this is one of the risks you take when you're in empty, and there's no one there to be able to pick up the blitz. Muhammad gets there before Chase Daniel can make the throw to try to go after that blitz. You talked about Chase Daniel at South Lake Carroll. One thing. You're 47 and one as a starting quarterback in high school. I'm surprised that Mangino's yeah, not yeah, using time out here. Yeah. On third and 18, he had a lot of time left on the clock. Here's the Three handoff inside to Temple. Run out of bounds, which stops the clock. Harris and Thornton. Chris Harris is a freshman working in the uh, in the secondary. Now there's 18 seconds left on the clock here fourth down they'll be forced to punt and uh, going back deep for the Jayhawks Anthony Webb interesting punt alignment that Missouri likes to use. We're trying to get a piece of this one, and they're just going to let it roll down, and it'll be down inside the 15-yard line. Eight, seven seconds left here in the half. We'll check in with Matt Weiner in New York. All right, Brent, let's get a Verizon Wireless update on the Iron Bowl. Alabama had picked off Brandon Cox of Auburn, and, but they get it right back in the red zone. John Parker Wilson tipped and intercepted by Gerard Powers. They've gone to the half there. Tigers have a 10-7 lead. Clemson leading at South Carolina now early in the fourth quarter. The Tigers have a six-point advantage on the Gamecocks lead. And here, Mangino and the Jayhawks are just going to take a knee and go to the locker room and see if they can regroup. Missouri dominated in the first half here. 272 yards of offense to 139. And let's go down to Lisa. Thanks, Ryan. Coach Mangino, tough getting points on the board. What do you have to? What adjustments do you have to make to to get your offense going? Well, you know, our offense is making some plays. Get down here in the red zone, and we're not getting any points, and that's hurt us on offense. We had a turnover here at the two-yard line and missed two field goals. So we got to make the most of our red zone opportunities. Third and 18. They had third and 18. You had about 40 something seconds on the clock. You chose not to call any timeouts. 
why did you want to just get to the, to the locker room? Well, we had 2.52 to go here. We're in a two-minute offense. We didn't, we didn't we missed the field goal here. Thanks a lot, Coach. Yeah, I'm not sure that the Big Bear understood that last question, but at any rate, we'll send it to New York to John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie for the Capital One Halftime Report. Take it away, Big John. All right, Brent, thanks a lot. 14 to nothing is the score on this one. Some might be surprised that unbeaten Kansas can't get their offense going, but if you haven't seen this Missouri offense, and Chase Daniel, this is one of the best quarterbacks I've seen this year. A lot of people had a chance to see him, but they really didn't realize how, how accurate the guy is. 21 out of 26, he's seeing the game, and his opponent on the other side, Reesing's not seeing the game, and he's seeing the line of scrimmage. So I really feel like it's the running game. It's Tony Temple, Missouri's offense. They're out there executing, and the confidence that Daniel has as a player is unbelievable. I think that's the difference. You talk about the running game a little bit, the, how physical Missouri has been compared to Kansas in this game. I think they got to get the running game going a little bit, and Reese's got to move around, use his legs, get himself into the flow of game. It's a cold night. He hasn't been on the field enough because Missouri's been driving the football. Start using your legs, get into the game. And I think that they also need to keep throwing the ball down the field. Reese needs to keep attacking the middle of the field. Winner of this game will get Oklahoma in the Big 12 championship game. The Big East was decided this afternoon as well. They, don't, of course, don't have a championship game. You caught against West Virginia. Winner was going to BCS. Pat White, 14 yards to Darius Raynaud, and the route was on. You know what, this was a UConn defense that was one of the top 10 in the country in scoring defense, and the route was on. Steve Slayton here for the long touchdown run. 66 points is unbelievable. This is one of the top two teams hands down in the country. And Doug, Pat White can do it with both his arm and, and his legs. We've been seeing him do this for the last couple of years. Just amazing speed on the field. You know, why not 186 yards a day, his season high. Why not talk him Heisman again and get back in the mix? They have a shot at winning the national championship. 517 yards rushing, and yes, Right now, West Virginia is sitting pretty. Beat Pitt next weekend, and they're on their way. I talked to Coach Rod on Turkey Day, and he said, hey, all we want to do is play in space. We're going to make them defend our speed, and the speed was on display today. T take care of your own. Win against Pitt. Get to a national championship game. That's the bottom line. That's the way it looks right now. Stick around. When we come back, we will try and clear up the national championship picture a little bit. There are a few things decided today, but nothing that lets you know who's going to be one versus two. This is the Capital One Halftime Report. Chase Daniel early on winning the battle of these two outstanding quarterbacks. A couple of touchdown passes, 14-0 Missouri over Kansas. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. In the ACC, we knew Flutie's team, Boston College, was already on to the championship. The question was, who would they play against? Would it be Virginia Tech or Virginia? Tiki Barber on the field, hoping, of course, that it is. His alma mater, Virginia. Sean Glennon, though, 39 yards to Eddie Royal, made it 20 to 14. Glennon rotating with Tyrod Taylor at quarterback. Frank Beamer's doing an excellent job of keeping them happy and using an offense now that can run the ball and throw the ball. Jamil Sewell, though, goes in to make it a 23 21 game. Virginia very much in it, but Doug, Tyrod Taylor on the ground. He adds the athleticism to the quarterback position. He uses them a little bit more in the red zone. And getting in the end zone, he's throwing the ball well, he's running with the ball well, and Glennon had a great day throwing as well. So Virginia Tech's on to the ACC championship game where they will face Doug Flutie. Apparently coming back to play in this game. There's his no eligibility there. Matt Ryan, five-yard pass to Kevin Challenger was 14 to nothing. And then Matt Ryan, 20 yards to Clarence Megua. This breaks your record, Doug, at 28 touchdown passes. Well, congratulations to Matt. He's had a great season, unbelievable year. Pulled some games out at the end. Congratulations. Calendar, though, is a this, guy you love. I, this is the guy, to me, that makes the offense go. This is the man that's not Matt Ryan, but Calendar out of the backfield catching the ball. Best receiver on the team. And you know what? He's going to have a chance. When this championship game coming up here, the ACC, revenge will be on the mind. See, I was going to say, you guys were at the game, and you saw the game that Virginia Tech dominated until the final three minutes of the game when Matt Ryan took over. The biggest issue is pass rush. Virginia Tech got after BC in the pass rush. They couldn't handle him on the edge, Ellis especially. At the end of the game, they went to some three-man rush. Matt ran around, made some plays, and ended up pulling the game out. Let me tell you the difference, though, in this game here that wasn't in that last rematch there. For 57 minutes, Virginia Tech's defense did do well on the outside, but now they get a linebacker back named Vince Hall. Vince Hall is a real inspirational leader. He's a great uh, guy on the field for making plays, and now he's back and healthy. So I think Virginia Tech's offense 
you know, it's going to be really different in this game Bingo. as compared to what it was last Something time. Something to be said about paybacks as well. Now, Georgia had interest in a couple of games today. First of all, the one they were playing against the rival Georgia Tech. Matt Stafford, 31 yards on this run. Yeah, the guy used to play shortstop. Still second, rounds first, he can run. He's not Pat White, though. <laughs> Matthew Stafford this time, nine-yard pass to Mohamed Massacourt. Boy, there's a nice shot, nice rhythm pass, and his own coverage down the goal line, stick it in his chest. And then Thomas Brown, 32 yards. Really oh. good balance, isn't it, John? I mean, this is this is an offense now that you're talking about running, you're talking about throwing the ball. Georgia, with only two losses, certainly has a, a shot at being one of the top teams in the country. Well, and if they could get some help from Kentucky today, they would go to the SEC championship game. in the. Fourth overtime, that's 40-yard touchdown pass to Quinton Hancock. Two-point conversion attempt, Eric Ainge to Austin Rogers. This one is good. So, Kentucky has to answer back. Again, it's the fourth overtime. Derek Locke, three yards on the touchdown run. Two-point conversion, Andre Woods, and nobody to pass to. Got to get the ball up in the air somehow, some way. Make an effort to get the ball in the air into the end zone, even if it's intercepted. So it's Tennessee true. is going on to the SEC championship game to play against LSU. The ironic thing here is Georgia, by not going to the championship game, they don't risk a third loss, so they got a great chance to be in the BCS. So, again, you're, you're like Ohio State. They're in yeah. the clubhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Golf clubs are getting cleaned up. But, you know, this is a, whenever it comes down to it, and the teams out there who have two losses, Georgia's sitting right up top, so is Virginia Tech. Congratulations to Tennessee moving on, but Georgia is playing great football the end run of this season. Like you said, in the clubhouse is a nice place to be this year. Yeah. Yeah. Ohio State sitting there right now still hoping they get in the championship game. Stick around. Coming up, we will continue with more scores and highlights. We'll let you know about games out west and also another one in the Big 12. This week on Sunday NFL Countdown, what keeps the 10-0 Patriots from getting too full of themselves? Frequent servings of humble pie. And just how close was Michael Strahan to retirement before returning to anchor the G-Men's defensive line? We go one-on-one -on -one with the Giants' sack master. It's all on Sunday NFL Countdown, 11 a.m. Eastern. Now to the Monday Night Booth and Mike Tirico. Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers are back in the hunt in the AFC. At 7-3, they lead their division, but Willie Parker and a stout defense have no margin for error. Is it the week Miami gets its first win? The Dolphins visit the Steelers at 8.30 Eastern on ESPN's Monday Night Football. Big 12, Oklahoma trying to get into the Big 12 championship game. They'd have to beat Oklahoma State. Sam Bradford, two yards to Joe John Finley. 28-7 at that point. Then Alec Patrick with a two-yard run. Known to Marco Murray because he was out with a leg injury. So Patrick had to step up. He did on the ground today. First 100-yard game for him since September. Sam Bradford, this touchdown breaks the all-division record for freshman touchdown passes at 32. They win easily. Oregon and UCLA. Dennis Dixon on the sideline. Brady Leaf is his backup. And he gets banged up. Oregon only passed for 105 yards yeah. today. Leaf had a bad ankle going into it. re injured it. He's down and out. Another quarterback comes. In. UCLA's down to their fourth quarterback, total of seven. They're down to the seventh string quarterback in this game. <laughs> Craig Shepard, 20 yards on this run. He had eight carries for 49. Oregon as a team, 39 carries for 43 yards. Ben Olsen did get back in that ball game. It's good to see him in throwing the football down the field. Florida State, Florida, the great rivalry. Tim Tebow says, what rivalry? 23 yards on this run. Seven to three is the lead. And here's why Tim Tebow leads a lot of people's Heisman candidate trophy because you saw him run the ball, watch him throw this one to Lewis Murphy. With accuracy, the number of plays beyond 20 yards this year for Florida is astronomical. This team here runs it, they throw it. SEC's got him, though. Two, those three losses keep him for a shot at the national championship. Tim Tebow ties the record for rushing touchdowns by a quarterback with 22 now. Heisman voting today. Who you got? Darren McFadden, man. If, if you watch football, that guy is unbelievable. He is college football's most outstanding player. Tebow close second. How about Pat White? Pat White got himself back in the mix this last little run. The fact that West Virginia has a legitimate shot at the national championship puts him in the running. But I think Tebow is the guy. 
McFadden's unbelievable. There's a, a list of names of guys. At least we now have guys we're talking about. Unbelievable. Right? We were going to mention tonight it. Chase Daniel. <laughs> Chase Daniel. Him as well. Stick oh, around. Yeah, Game day will take it over when we return. Halftime Report, brought to you by Capital One, always providing you with great value without the hassle for your financial needs. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Tigers lead the Jayhawks 14 minutes at halftime. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Desmond Howard. Now, KU recovered from slow first halves at AM and at Colorado. Haven't been down 14 points this season and doing things tonight they haven't done all season. <laughs> Missed field goals, crucial penalty, turnover, drop pass. Hey, Missouri's quarterback, Case Daniel, it's, I tell you what, this is the difference in the football game is this quarterback. Throws the ball straight. And in fact, the play he made where he went all around, threw a touchdown at right hand corner. Hey, Desmond, that's the play of the game right now. He's the difference between the two teams, Chase Daniel. Coach, what jumped out of me in the first half was the poor play of Kansas' defense. I'm standing on the sideline. And this time, near midfield. So this is an opportunity here. And, you know, and sometimes, this is a great case, and sometimes being co so concerned about a return man, you make an adjustment, and all of a sudden now you're starting it close to midfield. But the one thing that I've seen in this first half is Todd Reesing slowly start to, I think, start to figure out Missouri's pressure. Missouri is coming after him, unlike he's seen anything all year. It's going to be up to Kansas to give him chances to move him around in that pocket because Missouri's batting the ball down in many cases with the pressure up front. They toss on the first down. And there is the big running back, McAnderson, powering ahead is KU's best starting field position of the night. And our Southwest Airlines play. Well, this is a huge play here. This is a bit right after a big play by Todd Leasing to set up it looked like a potential touchdown interception by William Moore. And then the last two times Kansas had the ball, field goal opportunities, and both missed by Scott Webb. Now on second down and two. Losing a yard on this play with McAnderson. See, the, and that's Shulock making the stop. The slow developing plays from Kansas in the running game, you might as well just discard those. Missouri is coming too fast on defense and attacking. And if you're slowly trying to get to the outside, they're going to easily chase down the running back, Brandon McAnderson. Fresh defense across the board on the receivers. Third and three, throwing for the first down, does just that. There's a penalty flag on it. Fine is the receiver. May have gotten Briscoe here on a little bit of a, a hold. Personal foul, face mask, number 21 on the defense. That is 15 yard penalty, first down. So Bridges incurs the penalty, and again, Kansas has an opportunity, but can they finish? I saw Briscoe and Bridges lock up, and I couldn't tell if it was an attempted pick by Kansas right in the next to the left there. Oh, without question. question, Bridges gets up into the face, and Brent, you're exactly right. Kansas gets the ball to start the second half, take advantage of a poor kickoff, and now deep into Missouri territory. If they want to win this game, they've got to capitalize on this drive. At the 17-yard line, and again, Mangino told Lisa, trouble in the red zone, and here they are again. Here comes the blitz. Picked up. Throws out of the end zone, and it'll be second down and 10. And as long as Reesing sits tight and the big defensive linemen get in, He's having a hard time seeing downfield, Kirk. But his receivers are going to have to be able to break away from man coverage. You're looking at a quarterback last week hit his first 19 of his first 20 passes last week against Iowa State. Right now, he doesn't look as comfortable sitting in that pocket against this Missouri defense. Now, one of the ways to change that is to move the pocket to the right or to the left, as Chase Daniel and Missouri did in the first half. Straight handoff. And not much doing on that play. Now it is third down and long here in the red zone. 
Again, a slow developing zone play with Brandon McAnderson at 235 pounds against a attacking Missouri defense. It's going to be difficult to execute. It's going to come down to the Kansas wide receivers getting away from man to man coverage. They're getting right up into their face, not letting them get off the line of scrimmage and disrupting the timing between Reesing and the receivers. Reesing straight back. Throws middle, intercepted on the deflection. Here's Bridges. And Bridges takes it into Kansas territory. Todd Reesing by just not being accurate on this throw, throws it behind Henry and high. When Henry got a hand on it, Missouri's Bridges is there, and how fitting for Bridges after the personal foul. He comes up to make a dazzling interception and a big return. That's the second interception thrown by Todd Reesing, who came in with only four overall, and tonight he's been throwing a pair. So the Missouri defense continues to dominate. And Temple breaks for about seven yards on first and ten. And Reezing on the telephone with the coaches upstairs. He's talking with Ed Warner, his offensive coordinator. And it'll be interesting to see how Todd Reezing, who's had such a flawless season, is able to bounce back and not worry about the mistakes that he and this offense have made. But they're putting their own defense under the microscope and putting a lot of pressure right now on the Jayhawk defense. Here's that spread attack orchestrated by Chase Daniel, and this time they go to Derek Washington. Washington across the yellow first down line. You heard Desmond Howard at halftime mention this. I talked about it in the first half. Kansas has held Missouri and Chase Daniel to 14 points, but this is not good tackling. If you get there, John Larson, and you get there, James Holt, you've got to wrap up this Missouri team. They're here to play tonight. Field is spread all the way across. Throwing underneath for about seven yards, putting it in the hands of Tommy Saunders, and we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary. And as you would expect, Look at that rushing total for the Jayhawks, only 21 yards. 21 yards, and you're looking at an offense for Kansas that has come in tonight averaging 500 yards of total offense, seventh in the nation, and 46 points a game, and there's a goose egg up on the board. Second down and three. Temple picking up the first 10, and he's out about close to the 10-yard line. Been really impressed with this Missouri offensive line and Gary Pinkle's ability to mix up the play calling to keep Kansas off balance. I know that Chase Daniel gets most of the accolades, makes so many dazzling plays, but this offensive line is giving them some great balance. And look at this, Rucker, the tight end, going to take a snap. Shades of McFadden. Tucks it down and he's lit up at the line of scrimmage. Hit hard by Mortensen and Holt, two of the linebackers. There's only one Derek McFadden. I think so. <laughs> I mean, he's 6'6. Six, six. Gives a little fake. I don't know who that faked out, but 6'6, six, six, 255, taking a direct snap. Only one thing the big fella's gonna do. His brother, Mike Rucker, a defensive end for Carolina, he winced on that play. <laughs> Daniel again moving around the pocket completing the throw to Franklin first and 10 reaching for the end zone and down right there fine play by Will Franklin Chase Daniel comes off his primary starts to scramble to buy time and William Franklin again the Tigers showing a tenacious attitude fighting for that second and third effort and that time Franklin almost takes it into the end zone. Yeah, Lee Corso at halftime talked about Chase Daniels mobility on that second touchdown and that time again Chase was rolling hard to the right buying time back there in the backfield. And they bang it across with Jimmy Jackson. 
They've got a three touchdown advantage now, Kirk. It's all uphill for the Jayhawks. Uh, they are in a position that they've never seen all year, playing a better team that they've, than they have seen all year. And all of a sudden, Todd Reeson has to shake the cobwebs, forget about everything that has happened. Ten and a half minutes to go, still in the third quarter. Plenty of time for him if he can get things going and try to get this offense in sync. Jeff Wolpert adds the extra point. So the junior quarterback from South Lake, Texas, coaches opened up an envelope from the Heisman folks saying, stay tuned, you may be invited to New York. This can't be broadcast on ABC HD, presented by DLP HD TV. 21-0. The Kansas Jayhawks facing their biggest deficit of the season. Their largest earlier, only seven points, and it had been two costly interceptions here, Kirk. And on both occasions, Missouri has driven for touchdowns, one of them 98 yards in the first half. Right now, you have the feeling that Kansas is shell shocked. It's almost like they don't know what has hit them. Keep in mind, the last three times they've had the football, they've had success moving down the field, only to miss their field goals, and then that last series, they threw the interception. Back to the pooch punt. On one hop, fielded, and they will start this time at about the 34 as Brandon McAnderson picks it up and let us send you to New York and Matt Weiner. All right, Brent, this Sports Center Minute is powered by Vizio. If the Tigers hang on, they will face Oklahoma, the Big 12 championship game. The Sooners won the Bedlam game today, riding Spore. Sam Bradford touchdown passes. You'll see that 8 Eastern next Saturday night in San Antonio. And West Virginia ran up 517 yards on the ground to rout UConn. The Mountaineers win the Big East and put themselves in position for the BCS title game. And that man, of course, Oklahoma, the only team to defeat Missouri this year, and that the result of Missouri turnovers in the fourth quarter. They actually led in that game before leading by 10. And let us send you down below to Lisa. Well, Brett, remember, this is supposed to be a home game for Kansas, but Missouri is looking awful comfortable here. I spoke to Mark Mangino about it uh, earlier in the week, and he said, you know what? Our kids are excited to play here at Arrowhead. Many of these kids will never play in an NFL stadium. But I said, Coach, with such a big game, would you prefer to be playing on your home field at Memorial Stadium? He didn't give a yes or a no. He said, I'm a realist. I'm focusing on. Exactly. Second down and eight. Reese slips one out wide for a first and ten. And Desmond Briscoe, the freshman from Dallas, the receiver. Kansas came into this game, Brent, and I think we all thought for them to be able to compete with Chase Daniel and have a chance to win this game, their trend of playing smart would have to continue. Not turn the football over. Minimize the mistakes, and that has not been the story so far in this game. Marcus Henry's been quiet. The only time they've gone to him, pass interference was called. Here comes McAnderson. And he battles across midfield, put it down on the ground. So hang on. Missouri claims they've got another turnover here. Let's let the officials sort this out. Kansas football. Running play this time going right after Missouri, not bouncing it slowly to the outside, going right at them, and the ball came out once he was down. It's a good call. Second down and four here. Well, it looks like Missouri has Missouri. the timeout. That's their first timeout of the half. That's a full timeout. So Pinkle and the Tigers with a comfortable lead right now. 9-13 remaining in the third quarter. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company plane. Visit Southwest.com. Saturn. With five totally new models, it's just something to rethink about. Saturn. Pacific Life. For insurance, annuities, and investments, choose Pacific Life. The power to help you succeed. And Clean Exchange. A disposable head electric shaver. New from Remington.
Well, the basketball rivalry will continue on January 19th and uh, then again on Lawrence on February 4th, the 19th in Columbia. Incidentally, Kansas has a big one tomorrow night. 8 Eastern on ESPN. You want to watch this one if you're a Hoops fan. Kansas and Arizona tomorrow night. Second down and four. And Reese moves over to the right this time and completes it. So he moved the pocket a little bit that time to the right, found some daylight, and is tight end fine. Moving him around, taking advantage of his athletic ability, and taking advantage of an overly aggressive Missouri defense. Keep saying it. Which of these receivers can get away from the man-to-man -man coverage and give themselves a chance to execute and make it easier on Todd Reese? That time the tight end was there for Reese. Straight back, going deep, diving reception, a beautiful catch by Desmond Briscoe. There's a flag down. Hang on, back at the line Holding of scrimmage, it's coming. Defense, defense. The right. penalty is declined, first down. Well, Brent Justin Garrett, who was in coverage and actually trying to slow down Desmond Briscoe, got caught. Looking downfield, and once he realized that the ball's in the air, he's trying to catch up to him. He pulled onto the jersey of Briscoe, but finally, recent just enough time. The offensive line helped him deliver the football, and what a catch by the freshman. That's a 34 yard gain. They're at the Missouri Five. Here comes the blitz. McAnderson can't get away from it. William Moore, who's had one big interception tonight. There's Moore, number one, has stepped into that secondary. And you will see his name somewhere in the all Big Ten lineup next weekend, I'm sure. William Moore will be up. He'll always be up in the line of scrimmage, Brent. Gotta beat man-to-man -man coverage for Kansas. Racing on an option, gonna keep it bang toward the end zone. He's a yard short. One of the best calls against man, especially down inside this 10 yard line, is an option call. Kansas trying to get to the outside, trying to give the quarterback a chance to pitch it, but give Missouri credit. Even though they're in man coverage, they strung the option out and held him short of the end zone. This is a must score for Kansas. Third and goal. Jumbo look, McAnderson. Touchdown, Kansas. The Jayhawk fans with something to cheer, finally. All those slow snap counts, this time they went with their hurry up with their jumbo look. And it opened it up very nicely for Brandon McAnderson. Webb adds the extra point. And it was a brilliant catch by Desmond Briscoe. Diving reception and McAnderson battling his way in, and the Jayhawks are finally on the board. Game my life. Showtime, baby. It's the reason you come to play college football for an atmosphere like this. The 116th Border War. Missouri claims they're dead even. 53 53 with nine ties. Kansas said, uh uh, we won in 1960, not you. 54 52 and nine is the real count. <laughs> Whatever. He's in college football. Only one is older. And now with the Jayhawks on the scoreboard here, Kirk. Uh, you're saying they need a defensive stop. Wow. Ackland is back deep. He's saying we need a bolt of lightning. <laughs> yeah, he is. But you know, the, the stadium's starting to come alive. You're seeing some of the blue and red. You really felt that Kansas needed to get that score to have a reason to believe they've got their crowd now back into the game and their defense jumping up and down on the sideline. And then they're going to kick it to Macklin, the sensational freshman, slowly to the 20. He's out to the 31-yard line, and we check in. Matt Wayne, what's going on with Clemson and South Carolina? 
Uh, Brett, it could be a big night for Tigers all around the country. Clemson and South Carolina, as you mentioned, this is Mark Buckholz, who had missed two on the night. Pure from 34 yards out. That's your game winner. Clemson's won five of six in the series. They get their ninth win on the season. The Auburn Tigers leading the Iron Bowl. That game 10-7 as they head toward the fourth in Alabama. All right, and here, of course, it is 21-7 that Missouri had a 21-point lead. Jayhawk fans have something to cheer about here. Young Daniel rolls hard to the right. Nine yard gain. Getting back in the hands of one of his talented tight ends over there. So Mr. Rucker makes that catch. Brent, they love to stretch. The Missouri offense wants to stretch you horizontally, and they want to stretch you vertically and see how you respond to having to defend in space. That time a good read and an easy read for Chase Daniel. Jason Ray, one of the wideouts. Temple, first and ten. He has been a pest as far as the Kansas defense is concerned here tonight. 98 yards. He's going for a 100-yard night here, Kirk. Well, the thing that allows him to find the seams is that the Missouri splits are so wide. And the reason is twofold. They're trying to push that defensive line out further and further from Chase Daniel and also create running lanes. This is the offense and acquired taste by Coach Pinkle. He didn't come to Missouri with this offense, but he decided this was a way to compete with the big boys in the Big 12, and he's made it work. That spread attack, Urban Meyer was one of those that he talked at length with, having known him from his days in the Mid American Conference. Tony Temple, the ball carrier again. Temple's such a physical runner. I mentioned the splits, and you can see here in between the, uh, the linemen, these are very wide splits, and it pushes that defense out and makes them have to defend a larger space in their gap control defense and gives their linemen blocking angles. Second down to six, and here's Macklin. Short of the first down, but he stepped out of bounds on the near side. have that feeling we're at a very important part of this football game where Missouri has controlled the game for the most part up by 21 Kansas comes down and they put it up seven it's 21 to seven and now just have that feeling this is an important drive for both of these teams here midway and almost closing in of five minutes uh, in the third quarter this is the pistol look now the handoff to Jackson, who picks up the first and ten. This is the Chris Alt offense from out Reno way, where the quarterback backs away from the center, but he's not in the complete shotgun, and the tailback is right behind him. So Pinkle has added a lot of varieties. He's picked up stuff on this offense from around the country, but you've got to have the trigger man. Every coach says you cannot run this without the trigger man, and number ten is that. is complete and that is Jared Perry's first catch of the night I want to take you back on the schedule that Missouri played this year this is impressive no one knew that Illinois was going to become that good and that was a shootout in St. Louis and Kurt you were on the sideline against Oklahoma and you said that except for the turnovers they should have won that game well, Missouri was in a position to have a chance to win they actually had the lead in the fourth quarter in Norman and then self-destructed a bit with some turnovers it was second down and five for the Tigers. They hand it off. There's the penalty flag. Macklin breaks free at the 20 for the end zone, folks. But this one's coming back, I believe. There was a penalty flag back by the line of scrimmage. Macklin zipped on into the end zone. 35 yarder. Holding number two on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty from the Scott foul. Complete second down. That's a second big penalty on Franklin here tonight. He got caught up with Daryl Stuckey, the safety. It looked like he got a hold of his jersey. And once he did, that's when the flag came in. Pivotal block right in front of Mack. Just at the top. You can see it right at the top. Locking in, actually, it's on Rivera. Yeah, he was really had a grip on Rivera, didn't he? Second down and 
10 now for Daniel. In the heat. Here comes the blitz. Stands tall and delivers complete to the 23 yard line goes Alexander who has had a big night. That's 17 more yards and that's an 87 yard night on six catches for Alexander and one big touchdown. Brent Chase Daniel has that linebacker mentality. They brought the blitz. He sits in there very patiently, reads the defense, and puts a strike right into the arms of the receiver. Daniel with the handoff on a four-man rush. Temple breaks a tackle. And he's out of bounds. Stucky making the play defensively as John Larson had penetrated that time. Yeah, Temple has Tony Temple has great balance. He's got great power. He's physical. He'll make you miss. He's got all those beautiful qualities that you want in a running back. But if you're Kansas, you're going to look back at this game and say, guys, we were there to make plays. We just got to be able to tackle. John Larson that time missing a golden opportunity for a big loss. Only two linemen down so far on the front. Now three. Here comes the blitz. He just stands in there and delivers short of the first and ten. Tommy Saunders, the Z receiver in this formation. The accuracy is amazing from Chase Daniel. Right now he's 28 of 33. He's not missing very many passes. Don't get. Don't get caught up in the size of Chase Daniel. He can make every throw on the field. And Gary people told me this week, he said, you know, I've been around a lot of great quarterbacks in his days at Washington and around the college football. He said, it's the best quarterback he's had. Back in the pistol and timeout is going to be called by Daniel. Didn't like the look for the play call. Let's go down below and check in with Lisa. Well, Brent, it was just a couple of weeks ago that Chase Daniel got a letter, a letter that he said it's new territory for us at Missouri. No one else has gotten a letter from the Heisman Trust before. He said my my quarterback coach David Yost handed it to me. It had Heisman Trust in the top corner and it had my name on it. He said it was just an honor. They just wanted to tell me that my name's being thrown out there and to get ready. He said for me, uh, no greater honor than that. Even if I don't get an invitation, just the fact that I got that letter uh, makes me proud. And in our current who would you vote for right now for I'd say Who'd Darren, be number one? Darren McFadden's performance against South Carolina got him back in the mix. And then what he did against LSU, I think he's the best player in the country. And Tim Tebow's having just one of those years you just scratch your head and say, is this possible? So, who do so you which one do you vote for? Right now, there's still, there's still a little bit of football left. Politician. There's still a little bit of football. Darren McFadden right now is the guy I, I would vote for. How about you? I echo that. Darren I thought McFadden's performance against LSU was the most meaningful of this year. Legend. Here's a youngster who's going to be the top pick, everyone says, in the NFL draft. He laid it all on the line. He did everything in that big upset in Baton Rouge. Chase Daniel, though, deserves an invite to New York City. He is that good. He deserves to be one of the finalists. Another completion, this one caught by Saunders. Yeah, and as you know, the invites are based on the amount of votes that these players all receive. ESPN doesn't just randomly select who they want to invite. Based on the votes, Chase Daniel might have an opportunity to be there. Seems like he's a top three candidate if he ends up winning this game. He's been outstanding here tonight. No question about it. And you can tell just how much he is in charge of this offense as a whistle. So just prior to the snap. Ball start, 76 offense. Five yard penalty, first down. Ryan Madison moving. And you know what? You know, it reminds me a little bit of a uh, of a Peyton Manning of the college game with the way he's in total charge out there he looks over he's got the signal for the sideline moves his players around he's very confident in how he does things out here on yeah. the field yeah I, I, what I started to say is don't get caught up in the lack of height because he's listed at six feet and he just makes every throw you want to see made on a college football field pulling lineman stands comes delivers short of the end zone and a first down Alexander again 
Oh, Alexander wanted his second touchdown, didn't he? Well, he came close, and Alexander, a lot of times, is a forgotten man because of the other weapons, but it's just another example of how Missouri will attack you in different phases. Chase Daniel right now in the locker room, or in the, in the huddle, yelling at the offensive line, trying to fire them up to get him ready to score right here on this drive. We're going to give it a pistol look with Jimmy Jackson, the tailback, right behind him. They'll hand to him, picks his way, and he's going to be short. So this is going to be a third down coming up. John Jimmy Larson, the ball carrier. two very talented defensive ends who are outstanding students at Kansas, playing well up front tonight for the for the Jayhawks, who have their hands full with this Missouri team, as will anybody who plays them, whether it's Oklahoma or whoever they should happen to meet in a bowl game. This is a very good-looking Missouri football team. Washington now in. Going to throw the swing to him. Can he get the daylight? Touchdown. So Washington had just checked into the game, brought the swing pass call with him. And Missouri goes back on top by three touchdowns. And the Jayhawk fans are quiet again. Washington is their more powerful running back that they have even a little bit more powerful than Tony Temple if you can believe it once he made the catch running downhill it was an easy touchdown for the Tigers. Wolford nails the extra point. So Washington's first touchdown reception of his career and it came in a huge game. I'm in the SEC and here in the Big 12 for the North Championship and a spot against Oklahoma in San Antonio next Saturday night. And Kurt and I'll be down there looking forward to that one. And the news is not good for the Jayhawks, folks, when you take a look at what Chase Daniel has done in the fourth quarter this year, okay? A rating of 194.56. He's completed 37 of 42 for 399 yards. Unbelievable, and that's just in the fourth quarter. A bouncing kickoff fielded on the 25, out to the 35, and let's take a look at our rivalry notebook presented by Sonic. And there's the game that unfolded in Norman here, Kurt. Again, you could see by the way the game went, the ebb and flow of that football game, that Oklahoma is a team that right now regains their composure, regains the confidence. Alan Patrick, very physical offensive line. They'll go into that Big 12 championship game with a lot of confidence, no matter who they end up playing, especially with the way Missouri looks right now. I'm sure they're tired of hearing about Missouri. They'd probably like a chance at the Tigers. Incomplete second down and ten. Well, let's give them some props in that first game. We've talked about how Missouri was ahead of Oklahoma in the fourth quarter. How turnovers turned it around, and then Oklahoma won by ten. But in that game, the Sooners' defense sacked young Daniel three times, and they picked him off twice. So it isn't like they can't right. play a little defense oh, down there. Oh, of course not. And I think they did a very good job of giving different looks to Chase Daniel. It tried to create some confusion, and it did work out with some turnovers. Downfield complete for a first and 10 to the 41 yard line. So Reese makes one of his better throws to Dexton Fields. Dexton Fields last week had a huge game of 11 receptions. And in this football game tonight, he's been the go to guy for Todd Reese. Six catches again. I still I agree with you. I think Marcus Henry's got to get on track here and try to be able to beat some coverage and get downfield for Reese to be able to throw the football. Fake. Reesing fires on a one hopper incomplete, and it will be second down and 10. He was looking Henry's way. One thing that is an advantage for teams that run these types of offense is their base offense is basically a two minute offense. So, Kansas, the one thing they're going to have to do is just pick up the pace. It's a no huddle, but you got to pick up the pace once the clock has started. Second and ten. Deflected incomplete. Was 
Incomplete. The Bible's right on top of it. Arm was coming forward on the play. Ziggy Hood applying the heat that time. Missouri's defense has done as good a job as we have seen this year at getting after Todd Reese and keeping him in the pocket. He's an undersized quarterback that would love to break contain, but Missouri is keeping him in the pocket, and you can see how uncomfortable he is when he is contained. Third and ten for the Jayhawks. Here comes an all-out blitz. Nobody there, but he's short because Bridges read the run as he came up. But had he been able to find a receiver on that all out blitz, they might have struck gold on that play. I mean, everybody was coming. Zero coverage, man to man, nobody in the middle of the field for Missouri's defense. It's a high risk, high reward type of defense. And Reesing had to scramble. Final seconds, last play here. They're not going to get it off. We'll go to the fourth quarter. And ESPN Saturday Night Football, presented by Southwest Airlines, returns after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Missouri, 15 minutes away from a rematch with Oklahoma for the Big 12 title. <laughs> a Missouri fan taking a shot. shot there. Shot there. <laughs> Here we go, folks. Big fourth down as we start the fourth quarter. Kansas down by three touchdowns, 28 to 7. And here's your fourth and three for Todd Reesing and the Jayhawks. Nobody open. Got it. A creative play with Marcus Henry finally coming up with his first catch of the night. We've been waiting for Marcus Henry, but Missouri, they've shown blitz. They've shown pressure almost every third down, and it confused Todd Reesing because they only rushed three and dropped eight, and he threw it just over the head of a defender right to Henry. Now on first down. And there's the penalty flag. It came late, and that's on Moore. Fields was the receiver. Pass interference, defense number one. That's a spot foul, first down. Coach Pinkle not happy about that. He's frustrated because the official way back in the corner came in with the call. Good call. It sure is. It looked like Moore got there just a split second too early. Came through with his shoulder right over the top of Fields. First and ten. Back in that red zone. Kansas not only needs scores, but they need them fast. And timeout is called by Reezy. Well, he'll come on over to the Mangino sideline with 80,537 here in Arrowhead Stadium. Our Pacific Life game summary, and it will show you how we got here. Well, Kansas has self destructed, something we've not seen. A couple of interceptions have resulted in 14 points of Chase Daniel. What an amazing story. We wondered which quarterback would emerge tonight and lead his team to a victory. And Chase Daniel, 31 of 36 and complete control for the Tigers. And like we also said, Chase Daniels' fourth quarter numbers are phenomenal as we uh, come into that quarter right now with Reason and the Jayhawks needing to strike here quickly like this. They've got to move a little bit faster. Yeah, they are, they are going to have to pick it up. It would be interesting to see if they're able to get a score here because Todd Reese, if he gets the ball back, they're moving down the field, but they've got to punch it into the end zone. No chance at a field goal. They've got to go for touchdowns. So the Manginos are ready. Here comes the blitz. Got it off. And he found his man again for another first and ten. Marcus Henry suddenly. And there's a penalty flag to the side of the head. And it is against That's the Jayhawks. A, a huge penalty. 
And the signal from Bible was that somebody. Anthony, I'm sorry, Brent. Anthony Collins, far left, left offensive tackle, gets up into the face of Hood and just. He had so much force behind that, he just knocked Hood's helmet off by going right through his face mask. Collins, the leader of that offensive line. It's been one of those nights for Mark Mangino. And now the ball comes all the way back, close to the 30-yard line. It'll be first and 26. Pocket breaking down. Incomplete. And that was Shulock again. Shulock is a junior from Rockdale, Texas. And they've drawn another penalty flag on it. After the play ended, personal foul number one on the defense. That's a 15 yard penalty. That's more. First down. And that is a huge mistake by the Tigers. Well, Moore has played a perfect game tonight for Missouri. And this was well after the whistle blew. Moore's throwing the football. He gets his hands on the ball coming in, thinking it's maybe a fumble. And then he wants to just throw it into the kind of a light toss, but he threw it into the Kansas player. It was the intent that the official called. But it gives the Jayhawks a first and 10 across the 15 yard line from the 14. Here is Meyer with his second catch battling to get back to the original line of scrimmage. This is this is not helping Kansas and what they're trying to do. These passes to the sideline, and I know you want to try to outflank the defense, this time throwing it to Meyer, try to pick up a block, but Missouri, again, is attacking downfield. You have to throw the football right into the teeth of that defense. Throw it downfield. On second down. Middle got nine yards with Briscoe. Briscoe has really matured this year for this offense as a true freshman. So much more confident now. Seven touchdowns on the year. These last four weeks, you can just see what a bright future that Briscoe has, not only down the road, but as I said, this year he is a different football player. Third and two, Blitz Reesing shakes it and throws it high and complete. Henry, the receiver. Terrell was the defensive back with him in the back of the end zone. Kurt. The battle up front the entire game has been won by Missouri. Ziggy Hood fighting through there. They had a nice blitz, but I'm going to tell you, Brent, Oklahoma's going to watch this game, and they're going to look at this Missouri defense. This is a different defense tonight that I'm watching than the way they played earlier this year when they went up against Oklahoma. So what they do here on fourth and two, Reason's going to keep it. Got the first and ten, end zone touchdown, Kansas. Tough run by the little fella. Steve Redman, 18, comes down, loses contain, and gives Reesing a chance, even with a gimp ankle, to try to get to the corner, and he just makes it before Sean Witherspoon chases his him down. And, Brent, you're right, he showed some toughness there to get it in. Wood slides the extra point over to the right. Kyle Tucker, the punter, is the holder. He got it down, and you're watching ESPN on ABC. Well, Dancing with the Stars, the final dance, Monday, 8, 7 Central on ABC. Kirk is pulling for Elio <laughs> Castro Nevis. Did you find out who his partner is? I, I didn't know he's still in it. I know his partner's still in it. <laughs> I, I think it's Julianne. She's doing a bang-up job this season. Phenomenal. <laughs> that shows a huge hit. <laughs> Watch it every week. By Herb Street household, who's got that set on, man. Oh, yeah, it's so on Monday been. night. Yep. Tuesday results, Monday night long, we're all over. Jeremy Macklin back deep now. 
And this time they will try to keep it away. He runs up on it, on the run, bobbles it at the 25-yard line, battling to get free on the outside, and he makes it to the 31-yard line. A little excitement there, and uh, speaking of excitement, Let's go to the BCS now, the ESPNU All-State Standings Review. As you know, number one has lost. Number two could lose if they don't come out. But West Virginia and Missouri, they're the two hot topics. And folks, how about the Buckeyes and Mr. Herbstry kicking back tonight with their feet up, enjoying Me. the favorite bet. I'm not saying we're what? getting closer and closer to New Orleans with every snap. <laughs> First down and 10. They spread the field across now, and this is Chase Daniels quarter, or at least it has been most of the season. Going deep to Macklin, and I don't see a penalty flag. Incomplete. Macklin says, are you kidding me? Thornton was the defensive back there, and that was a high-speed collision, Kurt. Well, yeah, let's take a look. It looked like Thornton closed in a little bit early, and I love Missouri's play call. Kansas just scored. Oh. Yeah, Thornton got there just a second. I'll tell you what, if we're going to go back and say William Moore had pass interference in the last series, if that if Moore pass interfered, then Thornton definitely had pass interference on that play. There's the handoff. There's a penalty flag on the far side. Here comes Temple in the foot race. Made it to midfield, but there is a penalty flag on that far side. That pass. Let's wait for uh, John Bible, and he's done a terrific job with this crew so far of uh, illegal substitution on the offense. The 11th player came on the field, did not get inside the nine yard marks. That's a five yard penalty, repeat second down. Which Pickle obviously not agreeing with that call. But the risk of shuffling players on and off the field and running the no huddle, sometimes there is some confusion on the sideline of running players on and running players off. And when you sneak them in late, you're going to get called for that right at the top of the screen. You see me question about that. And here comes Macklin on that screen. First and 10 for Mizzou. And so far, Kirk, the only incomplete pass that Daniel has thrown is that one where both you and I thought might have been interference down the middle. He's now 11 of 12 this half. He's feeling it right now, and they're continuing to attack this Kansas defense. And Chase Daniels, his entire season, he has just been lights out, as you talked about earlier in the fourth quarter. And he comes with a first and 10. He's at the 44 yard line, checking over at the sideline. Here's Temple, broke down from behind by Russell Bronson. Well, Kirk, there's uh, what we have been uh, talking about. Yeah, he comes into this game, and not to mention what he's done tonight in the third quarter. As the game goes on, Chase Daniel becomes more in command and understanding of what the defense is trying to do to stop his offense. And right now, Missouri is attacking Kansas. Kansas comes in tonight third in the nation and creating turnovers, and tonight they haven't created one to get back into this game. This defense will have to make a play. South Lake, Texas. Daniel swings it to the outside and Macklin with his speed moving toward that first down marker. They're going to give it to him. So the chains move again. There are just so many game breakers in this offense with Macklin, Alexander, Franklin, Perry, the big tight ends of Rucker and Kaufman, Temple out of the backfield, Jackson, Washington in the backfield. And you throw in a quarterback who's making great decisions with all of that versatility. It's no wonder this offense is so tough to stop. Pump fake coming deep down the middle. Macklin incomplete. Man, is he exciting. Holding 78 offense, 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. And Gregory's holding penalty would have nullified it anyway, but uh, Macklin made a fine effort on it, did he? He's, he's one of those players that every time he gets into the football game and he goes downfield, you hold your breath. Gregory with a great takedown. 
This is wrestling country, right? Indeed. Nice, nice takedown. Big 12, great yeah. wrestling team. Yeah, he can make the team. Yeah. The revival of the Big 12 North this season. And as a result of what happened with the Missouris and Kansas, Nebraska will change its coach. And battling for the back toward the marker is Tommy Saunders, and we go to Matt Weiner. All right, Brent, 72nd edition of the Iron Bowl in Alabama is running out of time. That's Brandon Cox, great view of it. Quarterback sneak for the touchdown. Tigers now have a 10-point advantage there. And about three minutes to go in that one. Didn't get much for the four million, did they, so far? Second down and 10 coming up now for Mizzou. Kansas playing with soft corners. Look at the cushion from the corners with the Missouri wide receivers. Daniel throwing underneath that coverage quite a bit. Look at that again. There's the first and 10. And there's Big Rucker. Chase Daniels seeing the same thing that we're seeing up here. He'll take that matchup with Rucker, especially with the soft coverage. There needs to be some urgency from Kansas when you're down by 14 in the fourth quarter. You've got to get up into the face of these receivers. So they look over to the sideline. Kirk, it, it brings to mind a conversation that we had with the uh, coaches with Pinkle. Let's uh, watch this snap first. I want to tell you about it because something really struck me when I looked at their record. Here comes Temple spinning and down. I said, you know, of all the scores this year, I can't believe that you held Texas Tech to 10 points. And he said, in truth, it wasn't just the defense. We went on long, sustained drives, and we kept the ball away from the Red Raiders. They didn't have a chance to strike again. And that's what strikes me about this particular drive is that Missouri is coming down methodically, bringing the clock down, leading by 14 here. And he's again underneath the coverage. They're going to continue to take those chances if Kansas will give it to him. But that's a great point because it's a combination of things. Missouri's offense, eating up clock, keeping the ball away from a, a potent offense, and also being aggressive on defense twice now. Go back to the Texas Tech game when they played against them. They were aggressive against Mike Leach. They had three sacks. They held him to 10 points. They had four interceptions. They challenged him up in their face. It's the exact same blueprint tonight against Todd Reesing and this Jay Houck's offense. Third down and six for Daniel. Closing in, and he still gets it off, and it'll be fourth down coming up. And the intended target. Larson was applying a little bit of heat. 14-point lead. Chase Daniel frustrated because he didn't score, but a great decision just to back off and throw that football away. No need to take a risk. Jeff Wolford comes in, and uh, you wouldn't think they'd even consider their second fake field goal of the day here. Leading by 14, 10 minutes to go. It's a 43 yarder. They've got a good leg. 10 of 10 in Big 12 competition. Make it 11 of 11. So not only do they have a smooth offense and a tough defense, they've got a talented kicker. That helps. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. With Southwest Airlines' convenient nonstop flights, it's like having your own company playing. Visit Southwest.com. DLP HD TV. DLP is the official ESPN on ABC HD telecast sponsor of college football. The Nissan Titan, proud presenter of the 2007 Heisman Trophy. To cast your vote, go to the HeismanVote.com. And Verizon Wireless. Well, Lamar Hunt thought this would be a good idea, and folks, it's a great idea. Second largest Arrowhead Stadium crowd since 1972, and the Raiders are here, and they will play the Chiefs in this stadium. The crew tonight will work throughout the night to turn this field around to play an NFL game starting at noon tomorrow, and the Chiefs have got a long winning streak working against the Raiders right now. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Here's that high kickoff. Herford comes up the field at the 21-yard line for the Jayhawks. Jayhawks have to move now. 
Burford is out of bounds and let's go down to Lisa. Well Brent you said it. it's going to be a quick turnaround. I spoke to a uh, stadium's operations folks uh, during the week and they said about 200 to 250 crew people will come in here. They're all waiting in the tunnel right now waiting for, uh, the, for the buzzer to go. I guess you don't really have a buzzer in football do you. But anyway they're waiting to come in here. They're going to sweep up the field repaint it to put the Chiefs uh, the Chiefs markings on there and they're going to work Lisa is complete and uh, stepping out of bounds is the freshman Briscoe. Briscoe's got a great upside for Mangino and the Jayhawks. He's a Chiefs fan. Now speaking of the Big 12 and the Chiefs, somebody who helped one of the great upsets I ever saw is when Texas beat a Nebraska team. Priest Holmes was a running back and he had to retire again this week and we wish him nothing but the best. He was one of the great running backs that uh, we watched recently. Briscoe out of bounds on that far side. A reminder now to stay tuned for your late local news immediately following the game over most of these ABC stations and over on ESPN Sports Center will have post game analysis along with all the scores and highlights of the day. That SEC four overtime finish put Tennessee into the SEC title game. Recent on the move, throws complete, dropping it off that time, Kirk, to the running back, McAnderson. I want to see, even in hurry up mode, if we're going to see Todd Reesing continue to get up to the line and then wait till everybody's lined up and then look over for confirmation because this is unfamiliar territory for this offense to be behind. Right now, they're more of a hurry up mode. Incomplete. We go back to the box and one of the things to remember Kirk is what they said that they want to take everything out of his hands They call the plays and just clean things up so that he could operate as you can see he's looking over the sideline. Yeah, he's looking to the sideline Ed Warner the offensive coordinator up to the top left. He's the eyes in the sky. He's communicating down to the assistants of what play they want and this is their normal base offense. There he is looking over Warner up top looking down and communicating what play that he wants. That what we just saw. Let's see. Reesing back throwing. Meyer reaches up and makes a great grab. Number 10 yanks it down against Justin Garrett. Well, Ed Warner give him an assist from upstairs. He saw the matchup that he wanted. They want to take the game out of the quarterback's hands as far as thinking. They want to put the ball up in the air and find the former quarterback, Kerry Meyer, with the ability to make a catch over the top of the safety. Remember now, Kansas has scored on his last two possessions. And breaking a tackle is Briscoe again, getting close to the 10 yard line. He's going to be a fine wide receiver. Oh, he's he's going to be nice. Missouri. Bringing the blitz, the linebackers, the safety, Justin Garrett, recent backpedaling and finding his man Briscoe there just in time. Trying to apply heat. Briscoe throws in zone. Touchdown. Three consecutive scoring drives. This one to Dexton Fields. The key there, Brent, is a minute and 27 seconds. A good return to set it up by Herford. All they had to do was go 57 yards and they get on the board and they get on the board in a hurry. But now can they stop Missouri? Chase Daniel. Tack on the extra point. Pulls them to within 10. They've got 8.28 to go. So Reezy trying to fire the Jayhawks back in it. But do they have enough time? We'll find out. Championship Saturday on ABC starting at 1 Virginia Tech battles Boston College in the Dr. Pepper ACC championship game 430 UCLA battles Pete Carroll's USC Trojans Trojans back in the hunt for the Rose Bowl and at 8 Eastern Oklahoma will take on the winner of this game Dr. Pepper Big 12 championship game whole lot at stake next Saturday folks right here on ABC and now look at the Missouri team creep up on this kickoff expecting perhaps an onside kick here by the Manginos. But it's a pooch fielded at the 30 yard line by Macklin 
and Macklin is swung down at about the 38 yard line and now it's uh, up to this defense of the Jayhawks. Yeah, the, the only thing you think that Kansas could do tonight right now at this point in the game is to create turnovers to get the ball back to Todd Reese. The problem is the guys you're trying to slow down are having a great night. How about Chase Tanner? Talking about accuracy, 35 of 43. Kansas has done everything. They brought pressure. They've dropped seven. They dropped eight. He has sat in there and been a great leader. He's had some help too from some pretty good weapons. So we've got McFadden, Debo, and Daniel having Missouri great great timeout weekends. before the ball was kicked. That's their third and final timeout of the half. Now that's unusual to use the last timeout there. I know they got a 10-point lead at 8:28, but. Uh, And I don't I don't think coach is real happy about that either is it. So we'll take a break and come back <laughs> to Kansas City. <laughs> You might not remember, but a few years ago, Gary Pinkle, as we take a look at the uh, at the stats here on the two quarterbacks, Daniel and and Reesing. And there is Pinkle now uh, adjusting what he wants. He wants two men back deep. Yeah, he's got nine up close, expecting the onside kick with the hands team in. Going to be fielded at the 20 yard line. And we'll see about Chase Daniel. I want to go back to uh, Gary Pinkle. A lot of folks forget that a few years ago, some 500 season over at Columbia with Missouri, he was under fire. And a lot of it surrounded his assistant coaches. They wanted him to fire the offensive coordinator, Dave Christensen, and Pinkle would have none of it. A lot of coaches give in to that kind of media pressure. And it usually leads that they hang on for one or two more years and then they say bye bye. Pinkle remained extremely loyal. The athletic department remained loyal to Pinkle and now it is starting to pay off and it says something about patience with football coaches because we see a lot of big time jobs starting to open up as Chase Daniels run out of bounds on that far sideline. But Pinkle and his staff have stayed together. They've worked together as a unit. They changed the offense. That's the one thing that they did do. They went to this wide open spread. Chase Daniel was critical. It'll be interesting to see if they can continue it after he moves on. But that is such a good point in today's day and age where fans and media expect a miracle within the first two years. Two coaches tonight are examples of patience by the administration. Yeah, exactly. Kirk. Daniel. Sliding reception by Macklin. Tell you what, Dave Christensen doing a pretty good job tonight as an offensive coordinator. And of course, he has Chase Daniel. This team's up by 10 right now. Pressure coming in on Daniel. He throws that off of his back foot just with his arm, and he throws it right where Macklin can go down and make the catch right behind the linebacker, Mortensen. Here's there he is upstairs. All in the plays up incomplete rocker the intended target and uh, let's go back at him. I, I just have really been impressed with Dave and the way he's been willing as an offensive coordinator been willing to adjust to things. They put this offense in when Brad Smith was going into his senior year. They were able to have some success with it and then Chase Daniels ability to throw the football took this offense to a different level. Take a look down at the field, folks. They just spread it from sideline to sideline. And here's Macklin bringing him on the end around. So many of the wide receivers now, as there's a penalty flag on this one, but Kirk, as you know, so many of the wide receivers really are part time running backs in this offense. Holding 82 on the offense. That's a 10 yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's Rucker. And, and I think that is the challenge for these offenses today is finding the versatility from tight ends like Rucker and Kaufman who have the ability to play tight end and receiver. 
finding receivers that have the ability to run downfield and make catches, but they can be tough enough to come around and use the football in the backfield and be a threat in the backfield as well. It takes a lot of versatility, which means expertise in recruiting players that fit your system. Now, big plays here for Kansas. They blitz Daniel into the hands of Macklin, and this is going to make it third and long coming up here. 7-20, down by 10. Jayhawks want to get that ball back. They've scored touchdowns in each of their last three possessions, so they're hot right now if they get the ball back. And they have scored fast. If you're a Kansas fan, this is a crucial third down. You cannot allow Missouri to convert because it's not only a conversion, it's a couple more minutes off the clock. Missouri needs to get to the Jayhawks' 44-yard line on this play. Fake the handoff. Daniel over the middle, got him, first and 10, and that is Alexander who's made one big play after another tonight. Clint, you're right on. Denario Alexander has just been unbelievable. Third and 14. The pressure gets that time to Daniel just a bit late. How about this guy's poise in the pocket and the accuracy of that football? Big time play by Chase Daniel. So 16 more yards. Alexander, 117 yard night on his eight catches. Huge night for Alexander. And now here's Temple, and the clock starts to run. Holt making the stop, and a career night for Denario Alexander. 6'5, 210 pounds out of Marlin, Texas. Where's Marlin? You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. I, that was a, I, you know, I should ask that because I, I have no clue. I, I would guess it's down the Houston area, but I'm just guessing. You guessed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a gut feel. Here's the gut. I was cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel pulls it down, coming hard over to the right. <laughs> Complete to Macklin. And oh, that could have been a touchdown saving tackle by Tlaib. Because if Macklin had gotten into space that time, it would have been turn out the lights, folks. Well, th this is a heck of a highlight package tonight for Chase Daniel. He's done about everything. And again, I want to reiter reiterate, this team has the lead. They're continuing to attack, and Chase Daniel finds ways to make plays happen. He co his coach calls it, he has the it factor. And when you hear a coach talk about that, it's the intangibles that make Chase Daniel special. Oklahoma thinking about stopping it. And <laughs> Temple bouncing back to the outside. He gets drilled over there by Thornton. We've made a nice stop. He's a young man from St. Joseph, Missouri. We've mentioned a lot of kids, uh, Kirk, from Texas on both these teams. And it's amazing how many athletes around the Big 12 are, are from Texas. We'll see more down in Oklahoma. Yep. Yeah, it reminds me so much when you, you cover teams in the South and you get to the South the Southeastern Conference. Yeah. There's so many Florida players because Florida State and Florida exactly. and Miami can only capture so many of those great players. Texas similar when it comes to creating so many players with such great skill. Second of 15 now. Time ticking away on this drive. Here comes the blitz. Complete. He puts it back in the hands of Saunders. Saunders has been efficient. One of the other things that Daniel does, Kirk, that he really spreads the ball around. We've had all kinds of receivers, and man, Gino wants that timeout call now. That's what makes it so tough to lock in on Chase Daniel is because you just, it's not like he's just going to throw it to Jeremy Macklin. He will spread it around, and we've seen him do that tonight, whether it's been Rucker, whether it's been his creativity and buying enough time. And he, when he scrambles, he is scrambling to be able to throw the football downfield. And the backs get involved, they spread it, they spread you vertically, they spread you horizontally. Nine different receivers tonight have catches. Gives you an idea that when you get ready for these guys, get, I mean it's it's everywhere. Yeah, it's not just a couple of favorite targets. When you no. use nine, that's pretty good now. Yeah, you know, and, and we've had a chance this this game to all this hype, all the talk about the winning team's gonna move to number one. I wondered which of these quarterbacks and which of these teams would handle and play with poise. And Chase Daniel almost looks like he's out in a practice game tonight.
You talk about poise. Yeah, he was uh, he was bred to be a big time quarterback. Oh, yeah. he came out of that high powered Texas program. This time he's going to run it. And it stays in bounds. You can see the official. Signaling the clock is still running. Morton's making a stop. And you cover a lot of sports. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, if you're evaluating personnel, you have to go by production and what he is doing. So many times coaches get caught up in is he 6'2? Is that's he 6'4? So is he 6'5? In this kind of offense, that's irrelevant. You have to find players who make plays and bring them into your system, regardless of how tall they are or how much they weigh. Here's a 43 yarder for Jeff Wolford. Three minutes and 30 seconds away from a rematch with Oklahoma. One victory away from playing for a national championship. Unbelievable. Well, a reminder now, stay tuned for your late local news immediately following the game over most of these ABC stations. And over on ESPN, well, SportsCenter will have post-game analysis along with all the scores and highlights of the day. The four-overtime win by Tennessee against Kentucky. Of course, our showdown here, if you missed any of the highlights, Celtics red hot. Kevin Garnett has turned that franchise around. And again, it bears repeating. Missouri hangs on here, 3.30. And if they win, and it's a big if, Oklahoma will probably be a slight favorite down there in San Antonio. If Missouri can go in and win that game, they will play for the national championship. That much is clear. West Virginia with a big win over Connecticut. They have a game next week against arch rival Pittsburgh. And West Virginia, I would guess, would be a, a, a big favorite in that matchup. Now, if you're a Buckeye fan, <laughs> You're sitting there saying, Boomer Sooner, Boomer Sooner. <laughs> because they knocked these guys off. Remember, Oklahoma slipped behind the Buckeyes. Then we got the Buckeyes in West Virginia. If I got this thing straight, I, 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 I'll give you a crazy scenario. <laughs> what, what if Missouri loses to Oklahoma and somehow in the backyard brawl rivalry game, Pitt accidentally beats West Virginia? Ohio State and who? Oh, we have two losses. Georgia at 10 and 2. Well, now, wait a minute. Georgia gets to Even though they're not. How about LSU if they win, though? Would you take? <laughs> LSU lost. I, you, you, I don't, you jumped off the LSU bandwagon. Well, I mean, you lose like that. They've been floating with yeah, it. You but, lose late. I would take Georgia yeah, over so. LSU right now. What about Oklahoma? Huh? Oklahoma? You know what? Yeah. Huh? I, I personally think <laughs> Georgia and Ohio State, oh. if those two slip up. Well, I, I, you know, off the record, I want to see Ohio State and Pasadena. <laughs> Oh, the tackle is shaking there. It's me and you up in the booth looking down on the field. <laughs> USC and Ohio State. A, a, Are you kidding me? And you know, Jim Trussell has never taken the Buckeyes out to Pasadena. He loves to no. be out there. Because he, he wants to win a national championship after getting drilled last year, I'm sure. You yeah, know? He, he, they just go to the Fiesta Bowl. Yeah. The national title every year. Exactly. That's why they don't <laughs> get out there. Well, how about USC back in the hunt? For the uh, for the Rose Bowl with Oregon without Dixon, and it hasn't it been an unbelievable year for quarterbacks? You guys at Game Day should do the quarterback saga of the Pac-10. You know, yep. I mean it's been unfortunate. How about Oregon today? They look like a different team without Dennis Dixon. They, they couldn't do anything with him. But it's all about Missouri and Oklahoma. Missouri wins. They're in the national championship against West Virginia. Second down and ten, and reason. McAnderson, the running back, stopping the clock. Still three minutes to go here, and they're milking it again, coming right back down the field. <laughs> here we are, here we are celebrating a Missouri victory. There's three minutes to go. Mark Mangino saying, "Fellas, we're not done yet. We score here. We cover an onside kick. Win this baby, 35-34." <laughs> I love it. That's good, man. Freezing. He's in trouble now. He gets a good block downfield, deflected, incomplete. Kerry Meyer was the intended target. Justin Garrett. Was I, I like what Reesing's trying to do here, and a lot of quarterback coaches are going to say, "Don't throw back." 
against your body back in the field of play because there's so many defenders that can make that play, and he was pretty fortunate that Moore didn't come down with that interception. Here's your fourth down. Staying alive to the 25-yard line, Young Reesing. Gamer? He is that. Todd Reesing's a yeah. gamer. He's going to give you everything that he has. He's, great. he's turned the football over tonight, but he's had a pretty good game throwing the football over 300 yards in that time. Everybody's covered. He takes it, gets downfield. Deep, end zone, incomplete. And again, it's Garrett, number eight, making a couple of big plays here. Justin's from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, one who got away from those fellows down there at LSU. Was actually going to go to Tennessee, but Missouri ended up having a chance to pick him up. And he's big. Man. Boy, great size and had to step yeah. in for Pig Brown with that injury. Garrett and Dell Howard have done a pretty good job of manning that strong safety position. Second down and ten. First down on Meyer. Myers at the 15 yard line. Kerry Meyer, who's uh, for a young guy, last year starting quarterback, this year he gets beat out. He didn't go in the tank. He said, You know what, coach? It's the best move. It's going to give us a chance to win. I'm going to move out to receiver and try to help us out. And he keeps getting better as a wide receiver. Incomplete. The second down. I like the fact that Todd Reesing with only one timeout. Under two and a half minutes to go. He's now throwing the ball to get it downfield or to get it out of bounds. The clock is the enemy. Regardless of what happens tonight, that man has done a terrific job with this football program. Mark Mangino, he worked for Bob Stoops down in Oklahoma, worked for Bill Snyder at Kansas State. Second and ten. Comes in underneath to McAnderson. And he battles for that first down and crosses the five yard line. So it'll be first down and goal coming up here with 217. That was huge. That effort by McAnderson and getting across the, the uh, first down line allowed Kansas to get up. The clock is stopped, gives him a chance to get the play called. Touchdown. Four straight. This time, Marcus Henry. As a colleague of ours, as not so fast, my friend. <laughs> my man, here man. they come, here they come uh, onside uh, kick. Marcus Henry gets a chance to make a play, and by scrambling up into the defense, it brought the defense towards Reesing, and that's what allowed Henry to get free in the back of the end zone. As another old dear departed friend also said, the Jayhawks are coming, tra-la, tra-la, the Jayhawks are coming, tra-la, tra-la. <laughs> Brent, you see when he stepped up, you saw the linebackers and the safeties have to respect the fact that Reeson could scramble, and there's nobody left in the back of the end zone. Puts it high in the air for Henry with the size at 6'4 to go up and make a catch. How about those two? earlier missed field goals one off the right upright and pulling this one two missed field goals early in this game and an interception Missouri ended up making an interception at the two yard line when William Moore came up with a crucial play early in this game but, was, but the story was blown opportunities in the first half for Kansas they were trailing 14 to nothing they didn't have a point in the first half well, the good hands people are out there. This is it. Yeah, here comes your onside kick now, 203. You practice this every day. Every day in spring practice, summer camp, throughout the season, for this kind of moment. Kicker's got a chance to be a hero right here. Put it in the air. Give your guys a chance. In the 30-yard line and the left hash. Webb bounces it. It is fielded, and it is Missouri football with 2.03 to go. And that is Tommy Sanders, a wide receiver 
One of the good hands, folks, who covered that up for the Tigers. I can tell you something, Tommy Saunders, to me, quietly has had a tremendous game for Missouri. We've talked about the abundance of skill players, but Saunders is one of those blue collar guys that always seems to come up with a big play when Missouri needs it. Number 84 tonight in white, great game. The Jayhawks have one timeout remaining. And running, Tony Temple. Straight ahead. This isn't the NFL. Right? Play clock starts when all the players get up. Missouri will be taking their time. That's what Mark Mangino's yelling at the officials to get Missouri up. And let's see Chase Daniel, who's been in hurry up mode for the entire game. Can he run 25 seconds off the play clock? Is that possible in this offense? Daniel himself. Can he use it? He's the last one. First and ten, of course, would, uh, would stop it, but it would be over if they could hang out of the football. So 115 left, and Gino stops it. Third down and five. Minute 15 to go. Kansas cannot stop the clock. So the best case you're looking at, probably about 20. If you're Kansas, your best case would be to stop Missouri short. You can't stop the clock. There's probably maybe 20 seconds remaining. 15 to 20 seconds remaining. That is if you come up with a stop. Here on third down. Go and chase Daniel. My man's winging it. He's going to throw the football. <laughs> the way Missouri's been tonight. Temple into the middle of that defense. Short. Got to get up. Got to get up. So then here's your fourth down coming up. See when they start this. Pinkle having conferred with his coaches upstairs and Daniel checking with him. Of course, you're not going to attempt a field goal. And let this clock run down. Looks like they're going to take five. Blake, offense, five yard penalty, fourth down. Very lining up. He's talking about bringing the punt, punter out. And it's always the risk of the snap. Kansas a little confused here. They had their first unit defense on the field. Nobody yeah, back deep. Up this time. One final shot. Down at the nine yard line to leave the return man. To think that this score was 28 to 7 heading into the fourth quarter, and to now think that the fact that Kansas, I know it's a long shot, the fact that they had worked themselves back to have the ball down by six points. Pretty amazing fourth quarter by the Jayhawks. In trouble. There's a safety. 36 28. Now all the 
Missouri fans are breathing just a little bit easier. <laughs> Let's strike her Schulank off the edge. What speed. He has played with this entire game. Number 38, the right defensive end. Just speed right by Collins. Comes in. Little assistance there from Lorenzo Williams. Chase Daniels feeling it. San Antonio, here we come. The Oklahoma Sooners. For the first time, Missouri is headed toward the Big 12 championship game. The Mizzou fans are feeling it, starting to chant, we're number one. And it'll be a vote between West Virginia and Missouri. He took a knee, I believe. I think number three took a knee. That's what Pinkle's upset about. He fielded the ball and knelt down. See if he didn't take a knee on this. Yeah. See if he didn't kneel down. Yeah, Marcus Woods on the return takes a knee. And... <laughs> the Jayhawks still want that football. <laughs> So this will be the last snap. Victory formation for Mizzou. The border belongs to the Tigers. Hello, Oklahoma. And for Mark Mangino and the Jayhawks, they'll now go back to Lawrence and await their destination. They'll be headed to a good bowl. Remember, they can still get one of those BCS at large bursts sitting there with a record of 11 and 1 the Kansas Jayhawks with all these fans who travel they're going to be very attractive and a team that is just one win away and it'll be a tough game against Oklahoma Missouri could wind up in New Orleans. Let's check in now with Lisa and the winning quarterback. Chase, with two minutes left to go, you look up, it's 28 to 34. What were you thinking? They wouldn't die. Kansas never died, and, and we put our hearts out so today, but we came out and win. Well, you look very excited when that safety got put up on the board. What were you thinking then? Uh, just, just, hey, here we go, San Antonio. You know, it's the start of our journey right here. We got a cool couple weeks coming up, so we got to take care of business. You told me earlier this week that you played some of the best games of your career in cold weather. What's your secret in this cold? Uh, just don't even think about it. It's just any other game. You know, it was good to come out here. You know, our teammates made plays, our defense made plays, and we finally won. Now, Kirk and Brick made the point that you got the ball to nine different receivers. What does that say to you? Uh, we have nine different receivers that can make plays, and we're all playmakers, and, and it's, it's, it's a good thing to have. All right, congratulations. Thank to you. you very much. the drum loudly to the winner goes the spoils and our players of the game chase Daniels the outstanding quarterback and folks Desmond Briscoe is a rising star with the Jayhawks that diving catch inside the five really ignited a Jayhawk rally here but Chase Daniels was too much so Missouri heads to San Antonio once again, they win the Big 12 North, 36 to 28. Next week at 8 Eastern, the Dr. Pepper Big 12 Championship, Oklahoma and Missouri. For Lisa Salters, Kirk Street, and our entire EPN, ESPN gang, I'm Brett Musburger saying so long from Kansas City. This has been a special presentation of ESPN on ABC.